this is the real hustle on holiday. In this series, Alex, Jess and Paul expose to our hidden cameras the scams that cheat tourists and travellers out of their hard-earned holiday money. On tonight's show... Great. Yes, sir. Paul goes for a walk with someone else's luggage. TV star Andy Peters gets to grips with a form book. Oh, my word! And this guy finds out why you should never accept gifts from strangers. people on this show have been hustled for real and after being given their money back they agreed that the footage could be shown so you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams it's a beautiful day on the Costa del Sol the Sun sand cheap drinks and party atmosphere make this part of Spain a holiday favorite with millions of British tourists Alex and Jess are soaking up the cost of sunshine, but they've got more on their minds than just getting a tan. Alex takes it easy on a bench, while Jess heads further along the seafront to a local cafe, an ideal place to carry out the teddy bear scam. Jess gets into position beside the beach. For this scam, she's going to need all her skills of persuasion as a sexy swindler. She's looking for a mark that's open to a bit of holiday flirting. And it looks like she's hit the jackpot. <laughs> Jess gets to work. First, she needs to break the ice. Are you English? Yeah. You are. You're Scottish? <laughs> no, you sound really disappointed about that. Do you know what the name of this place is? I think I might be in the wrong place. Poor Jess seems to be lost and doesn't know if she's in the right cafe. This, this, I, I just one of the lads is giving Jess a good once-over. He's just made himself her primary mark. Where are you from? I'm Liverpool. You're from Liverpool? Where about in Liverpool? Yeah, in where? My brother's just moved there. Yeah, I, I actually don't know where he is. He's only just moved there now. He's moved in with, um, with his flatmate and his, and his little one. What a coincidence. Jess's brother and nephew live in exactly the same part of Liverpool as the Mark does. So when are you going? When are you all going back? Or? Well, we shut the bar on Saturday and then it's all the staff to do what we want. After. That's exactly what Jess wanted to hear. These guys are all heading home to the UK in a few days' time. No. Do you know what? I know this sounds really, really odd. You know, you say that where well, you're from in Liverpool, that's where my brother is. Mm. He's got um, a little boy and he turns one on the 25th. We've had this massive argument because I'm going away for three months, basically. I know it sounds a bit like, you know, a bit forward, but would you mind if I went and bought something? If I gave you something to take back and got my brother to pick it up? I think you could do that. Yeah. I don't trust the post here and I just I don't want to be sending anything away. You don't trust me. Oh, I do, you know what? I trust you more than I trust the post. <laughs> <laughs> because every is a complete lie with, with drug dealers, really. <laughs> oh my god, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what, like, anywhere where I can get something around here? Do you know the area? Um, Would you want, do you want to come with me or something? Um, okay? What a gent. He's willing to do the damsel in distress a massive favour. Jess tells her new friend Danny that her name is Susie and leads him across the street to a nearby shop to pick out a present for her nephew. He's one. <coughs> I don't think a one-year-old would want that, would they? Oh, that's a one-year-old? Is it a boy? A little boy. Yes, one like this. The mark thinks a teddy would be a good idea. Sweet. Get the one from behind there, people will be touching that. How much is that? 18 euro. Yeah, a teddy. They've both agreed. It's the perfect gift for her one-year-old nephew. Very naughty. That very so that's Jess's gift problem solved. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. All she needs to do now is get the mark's details so that she can arrange for her brother to pick it up when he's back in Liverpool. Seventh of the text what? What's your address? Eight. Ace. 
Jess punches his address and phone number into her mobile. As a final persuader, she even promises to buy him a drink next time she's back in England. Thank you so much. And I don't mean to be just like really poor, but you've really, really helped me out. It was really nice to meet you. I'm going to go off that way because I think my mate's down there now. Yeah. Thank you so much. Lovely to meet you. Take care. Thanks, Danny. They say goodbye and go their separate ways. The Mark can't wait to get back to the cafe to tell his mates all about it. She just saw her eyes. She was gorgeous. Yeah. She said she was being me with a pool. Cool. With his head full of Jess, the Mark doesn't give a second thought to the teddy bear in the bag. Why should he? It's just an innocent stuffed toy from a gift shop. Or is it? Let's take another look at what happened. I don't really know the air. I've only been a few times. While Jess was chatting up the Mark, Alex was waiting patiently for his cue. As soon as he saw the two of them leave the cafe, he made his move. For this to work, he had to get to the gift shop 30 seconds ahead of them. In a moment of clumsiness, he knocked a teddy off the shelf and onto the floor. But when he picked it up, there were two teddies, including a new one that had been concealed in his bag. He then made sure his teddy bear was placed at the back of the display. With only seconds to spare, Alex slipped out of the shop, walking straight past Jess and her new friend. Just follow this. That's quite sweet. The teddy that Jess picked was, in fact, the one that Alex had placed on the shelf just moments before. So where's the scam? Why have the hostlers gone to all this trouble? Thank you. Take care. Thanks, Danny. Danny is going to find out. Yeah. How are you? Nice to see you. Uh, yeah. Money won is twice as sweet as money earned. Might as well say goodbye now. And money won from a celebrity is even sweeter. <laughs> I am on the verge of crying. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Let's see if you can do it. Oh. In the Celebrity Kong Games. This week, the hustlers are up against TV presenter Andy Peters, whose career has taken him from the BBC's broom cupboard with Ed the Doc to Saturday morning favourite Live and Kicking, right up to Celebrity Masterchef. Why are you all being so relaxed? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a nervous wreck, and you're like, oh, sorry. What are you That's just what everybody says. Uh, are you competitive, Andy? Very. Oh, really? ah, yes. That's why you're nervous. Yes, really? absolutely. Andy is also a bit of a fitness fanatic and has the muscles to prove it. Have you been to the gym this morning? Not yet. I'm okay, going to well, go to the gym this afternoon. But you do go, you go like, regularly? Yeah, six, what, five, six days a week. Mm. All right, well, look, we do, we do have a challenge for you. Yep. It's a test of strength. Be right back. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> Paul's going to get something that we're going to use. Okay, right, okay, fair enough. Now, as you can see, I don't really do the gym. Now, look, it's going to be a test of strength. Yeah. We're basically going to try and rip these uh, old phone books here. Okay. So these are the rules. Yeah. There's three things you've got to keep, keep in mind. Okay. You have to tear it down the middle like this. Oh! Not along the spine. Right, okay. Right, you can't do something silly like tear one page at a time. Right. Okay. And it's whoever does it fastest between you and me. Right, I'll okay. be timing. Okay. You can use whichever one of these that you Is want. It? Okay, let me just have a quick. So Andy and Alex are going head to head. Whoever turns the phone book in two the fastest wins. Yeah. Have you got ten pounds? A tenner? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I have, but I'm not sure I want to bet anymore. Um... But before Andy can show off his impressive strength, he needs to put his money where his mouth is. Let's just... Okay. I don't... All right. Ready? Paul, ready? Steady? No, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, there must be a way of doing this. So I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry. There must be a way to do this. Oh, what the heck? Start the clock. Go on, ready? Ready, steady, go. He's off to a slow start. It's hard, isn't it? What do I do after 15 minutes have passed? <laughs> <laughs> um, give us a ten, I think. Faint. <sighs> oh, it's getting Oh, look at that. <sighs> OK. Let's see. Oh, oh. Yeah. yeah, 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 that's good, that's good. Andy's finally managed to rip the first few pages. Coming up for two minutes. Really? <sighs> just let us know when you want to call it a day. <laughs> I know it's just yeah. burst a vessel or anything. I can feel myself breaking into a sweat. <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't know. Right. He can't do it. Nine. It's form book one, Andy Peters nil. I'm going to be impressed if you can do it at all. But to win the bet, 
Alex still needs to prove it's actually possible. Stop. Unbelievable. Alex doesn't even have time to break a sweat. Oh, oh my excellent. word! Phone book, in half. Yeah. I think you can see. That's awesome! Yeah. Cool, <laughs> I'm glad you like that. So how did Alex do it when Andy had already shown that brute strength isn't enough? It's all in the technique. Alex bent the book in the middle to make it a U-shape and pulled the top tight with his thumbs. This stretched out the uppermost pages and concentrated all his strength in just one spot. He tore through just a few pages at a time rather than the whole book at once. And once the tear appeared, it was simple work to rip through the rest of the form book. That's brilliant. That did cost you a tenner. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's another tenner to add to the Hustlers collection. Why don't you hold that up? We're going to take a picture. Yeah, that's OK. Yes. Making Andy Peters the latest celebrity victim. Thank oh. you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Got your phone book? I'll use the internet for yeah, now. If you're planning a holiday this year and don't want to run into any hostlers, here are some helpful tips to keep your possessions safe. First of all, always use a travel tag. All you need to do is jot down your name, contact number, and your hotel address. And that way, if your bag does get lost in transit, it can easily be forwarded on to you. And if you do decide to put your home address on your luggage, never put it on the outside. This is just advertising that you have an empty house. Write it down on a piece of paper and stick it on the inside of your bag like this. Most importantly, always use a padlock on your bag. Some customs officers have the right to open your bag whether it's locked or not. So it's good to remember that in some countries, such as America, they have these. A padlock where you can set your own combination, but with a lock that can be opened by any customs officers. And that means that they don't have to break into your bag if they wish to open it. If you're going on holiday, chances are you'll be passing through one of these, a major international airport. With so much security around, you'd think that your belongings are perfectly safe. But as the hostlers are about to demonstrate, ingenious thieves can still separate you from your possessions. In fact, they can even make you give them your hard-earned valuables. Paul's inside the airport terminal. He wants to see if this con will fly in the airport pickup. This is the area right outside the baggage reclaim hall. It's here that taxi drivers wait to pick up arriving passengers. And that's exactly what Paul is doing. On his clipboard is the name of the passenger he's expecting to meet. The con is on. Hi there. Great. Let's, uh... Like any good driver, Paul insists on taking care of the luggage. No, we bring the trolley, because uh, I'm probably going to bring the car around. Yeah, it's probably the best way. Of course, this isn't Paul's day job. In fact, he's got no intention of giving this couple a lift. What he wants is the luggage. Jump on today? Oh, good. How's the weather? No snow, no. What I'm going to do is save us a little time. I'm in the driver's car park. You can't go there because it's a security thing. If you wait there, I'll run your bags down. I'll be there in less than five minutes. Otherwise, I've got to take you to the other car park. It takes 15 minutes or so, OK? So just straight ahead of these doors, the barrier, I'll see you there. Usually it takes about three or four minutes, OK? Take care. It's like taking candy from a baby. Paul walks off with their bags and the Macs go outside to wait for a car that will never turn up. So how did Paul convince complete strangers to trust him with their bags? And how did he know the name? To find out, we need to go back 20 minutes. Shortly before the passengers landed, Paul took up position in a cafe next to the arrivals gate, waiting for the right opportunity to present itself. And at this busy airport, he didn't have to wait long. This guy is a real taxi driver. 
and he really was here to pick up some arriving passengers. He had no idea that he'd just been caught up in the hostler's scam. This was the key moment. Without arousing suspicion, Paul had to sneak a glimpse at the driver's clipboard, which gave him the vital piece of information he was looking for, the name of the arriving passenger. He copied the details onto his own pad. But that was only the first part of the scam. In order for Paul to pause as a driver, he needed the real driver to disappear. Enter Alex and Jess, who'd been watching the whole time. As they walk past Paul, they clock the name on his pad and assume the roles of the passengers. Hawkins, Hawkins, Hawkins. Oh, Hawkins. Hello. That's us. That's Hi, there. Hi there. Richard. Hi. Nice to meet you, Hello. Richard. Hi. Hi there. Sorry, we came out of a came different exit. Way. Oh, did you? Yes. The real driver had no reason to question Alex and Jess. And as soon as his back was turned, Paul stepped into his place. Next, having moved the driver away from the arrivals gate, Alex and Jess had to ditch him for good. Sorry, can I be really annoyed? Can I slip to the loo really, really quick? Is that okay? Um, should we meet you by the paying machines? We've... Do you know where that's the are? Yeah. Yeah, we, 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 we do this got, a lot. We do this uh, like twice a week. <laughs> Thank uh, but yeah, you. we'll meet you down there because I'm just going to. We'll, we won't be. Two minutes. Thank Thanks. You. Job done. He'll be waiting for them for a very long time. At the gate, when the marks saw their names on Paul's clipboard, they naturally assumed that he was the driver they booked. Hi there. Great. And that's why they had no problem handing over all their possessions. After waiting outside for 20 minutes, the marks start to wonder what the hold-up is. Plenty of time for Paul to catch his own ride in the car park, courtesy of Alex and Jess. Eventually, it dawns on the marks they're never going to see their driver or their bags again. The shirt and black tie and the black jacket and the long coat, so he looked, I mean, he looked really professional. And he was from Glasgow, so we just believed him. <laughs> it's not as if we checked his ID, checked, you know, kind of see some ID for you with a bag. See, the reason why we trusted him was because he was literally standing there with a piece of paper with your surname on it, so. In this scam, there's absolutely no reason for the marks or the driver to assume anything until it's too late. And with Paul standing there with a notice board saying the mark's names on it, they naturally assume that he's been sent by the taxi company. To avoid this type of scam, the driver can ask the passengers where they're going because obviously he knows the destination and they should too. And the passengers can check his ID. But the most important thing is to remember not to allow yourself to be separated from your belongings. Very often when we get off an aeroplane, we're thinking about our onward journey, perhaps we're tired, perhaps there's some jet lag, and sometimes our guard is down. So we're not as cautious as we would otherwise normally be. And that means that airports are good places for scammers. When on holiday, it doesn't get much better than relaxing in the sun with a drink in your hand. Except if that drink is free. The hostlers are going to show you how to win drinks from your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hostlers always have the edge and you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. Jess has found these three guys in a seaside bar, but she's not planning on buying any drinks. Who's the most competitive out of you because I reckon it'll be you two? Only because you're younger. I don't need it. You don't need it? You've got your age? No, I'm competitive. Are you? Age sports. Are you competitive? Well, I'd rather think so. Yeah. OK, so I'd like to do a little competition to see, um, see who wins, if that's OK. Um, I've got these two bottles here. Uh, they're bottles of water, glass bottles. OK? Basically, what I want you to do is empty the bottle of water into this bucket, and I'm going to time you, and whoever can empty the water out first wins. So if you, you can drink it, you can pour it, 
any way to get the water out as quickly as possible and you need to put it into this bucket. And I'm going to time you both, but I want you to both do it at the same time. And I've got your watch, because you've got a watch down there, so I want to time it. So these are your two bottles. When I say go, start pouring. Try not to spill anything. Ready? Hang on, let me get this. Three, two, one, go. Way. Okay, I see you've got a different technique. Okay. Ten seconds. Oh, I see, twisting it. Coming up to 15. Yay, winner. 15 seconds. Whoa. 13 seconds. 15 seconds. I guess you won. Was that difficult? But well, you know what though, I bet I can do it quicker than that. Yeah? So you took 13 seconds, I reckon I can I reckon I can do it in less than ten. Possibly even less than, less than seven. Less yeah. than seven. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, you, you can't do it in seven seconds. I can't do it in seven seconds. Okay, if I can you buy me a drink? Exactly. That was all. Yeah. You buy me a drink. Yeah. That was off the time. You can as well if you want. You exactly. Drink. Exactly. Drink. Drink. Can you please time me? Uh, when it Hello, gets when it gets to no, the quarter to there. Uh, I didn't say you couldn't use anything. You can use the store. Ready? Wait for it. Ready, steady, go. Um, How quick oh, was that? That was four seconds. About half seconds. <laughs> it's all down to the straw. Jess inserts a straw into the bottle, making sure that one end is sticking out to the side. This way, air from the outside fills the space left by the water, and the bottle empties in less than half the normal time. That's you all owe me a drink now, but I'm just going to stick to orange juice, so oh, the bar. Two weeks ago, the hostlers set their sights on Danny, a British traveller working on the Costa del Sol. Okay, you English. Jess charmed the market to Seaside Cafe and persuaded him to take a teddy bear back to Britain for her one-year-old nephew. What's your address? Who he thinks just happens to live in exactly the same area of Liverpool as he does. Yeah, thanks, Danny. Of course, with the hostlers around, there's no such thing as a coincidence. Danny is now back home in Liverpool, having brought the teddy bear all the way from Spain. And as luck would have it, Jess, a.k.a. Susie, has come back to the UK early. They've arranged to meet up in an Italian restaurant for a drink and to hand over the present. Keen to meet Susie again, the mark is right on time, and most importantly, he's brought the teddy bear. Unfortunately, Susie doesn't seem to be around. Instead, he runs straight into Alex, claiming to be her brother. Hi, I'm Robert. I'm Susie's brother. I mean, oh, you've got oh, yeah, the teddy yeah. for her. Yeah, that's the teddy bear, yeah. Nice, thank you. Hey, Susie. Thank you. She's a... Oh, good. That's a good choice. Come in. She's just running an errand for me. She's going to be here in five minutes. Come in. Her uncle Paul's here. Say hello. Seems like Danny's getting to know the whole family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just sit down. Do you want a drink or something? Have a seat. Oh, I'll give you that wine. Oh, how are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Daniel. Danny, yeah. Sit down. Mm, where, you met Susie in... Uh... Oh, nice. Can I get you something? Yeah, no, I'm fine. You all right? Thank you, yeah. Got some wine cool. or something? This isn't how the Mark was expecting his evening to turn out. He's starting to think something's up. You hungry? Yeah, no. So you sure? Yeah, I'm all right. I got some meatballs going. Yeah. No, it's okay. Yeah, yeah we okay. make good meatballs here. It's okay. Yeah, we make meatballs out of any kind of meat here. Yeah. Alex gets out a set of scales, but as the Mark is about to find out, they're not for weighing parmesan. You met Susie in Spain. In Spain. Yeah. Just randomly come up to me and said that you've moved here in the and just said, "Can I do a favour?" And she bought me a teddy bear and told me to come down. Ah, oh, good for you. Yeah. Everything okay? Yeah. Came back okay? Safe? Yeah, it's nice. Right. Safe? Yeah. Good. The teddy got back without a mark on it too, but that's about to change. You doing? I'm having a quick look, just check everything. It's just necessary. It's not we don't trust you. Which is all right. It's just dawning on the mark that he's been used as a drug courier. What seemed like an innocent good deed for an attractive girl 
has turned into the worst day of the Merc's life. Hey, it's a little light. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, he's it's a little light. Everything's it's all right. Yes, sir. You're good. Hey, listen, don't, don't worry. Don't worry about it. I think we should relax. Maybe be a little yeah, bit. Relax, no one's going to go to jail. Well, she's a pretty girl, don't worry about it. I mean, you're you know, you're not the first person who's, yeah, you know. I've been conned completely. Don't worry Have about it. Have some more. You know she's not coming, don't you? No. Did she pay you? Did she give you any money? No. <laughs> We're not going to pay you any money. This is The Real Hustle on Holiday. In this series, Alex, Jess and Paul expose to our hidden cameras the scams that cheat tourists and travellers out of their hard-earned holiday money. On tonight's show, what the hostlers get up to at home. She's heavy. Someone else's home. Yeah. <laughs> Commonwealth swimming champion Mark Foster goes for gold. And this couple finds out why you don't buy foreign currency from some guy in a bar. We've been mugged off. What? All the people on this show have been hustled for real. And after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. When abroad, many travellers hire cars or take their own cars on holiday with them. But what happens if things go wrong with a vehicle when you're away from home? Or even worse, when con artists make something go wrong? We're about to find out in the oil slick scam. Alex and Jess want to get their hands on a car, and in a busy holiday resort like this Costa del Sol seaside town, it doesn't take long for some potential marks to park up next to them. The motorists head for a supermarket, so they should be gone long enough for Jess to take a closer look at their car. Apparently fixing a problem with her shoe she kneels down out of sight. What she's actually doing is more sinister. In her hand is a bottle of brake fluid. She empties almost the whole bottle under one of the car's front wheels. Now all the hostlers have to do is wait for the marks to return with their shopping. Seeing the marks come back, Alex and Jess get out ready to intercept them. What is that? That is a massive puddle of brake fluid. Alex? That's brake. What? That's braking fluid. Is that your car? Yeah. Looks like you've got braking fluid coming out. Brake fluid. I wouldn't drive that if I were you. That amount of, oh my God, there's loads of it. The bolt must have come off in something. Yeah. Do you live far from here? No, yeah. not a bit. But there's a mechanic just around the corner uh, that we use. They speak English, they're very good. What they haven't ripped us off. Just literally just literally. around there. i tell you what, if you follow me, I'll, I'll, I'll show you where it is. Yeah. It's literally behind that building. I think you need to take it there, because you need to lift it up and have a look at it. This scam won't work unless Alex gets the marks to follow him in their car. No, you don't want to be driving down the motorway going, hang on, we're not slowing down, <laughs> yeah? Let me pull the car out and I'll get behind you. So far, so good. The marks let Alex lead the way to the local repair shop. Just around the corner is a very familiar looking mechanic. It's now over to Paul to get the marks to hand over their keys. Hola. You remember us? Oh, hi. How are you? How are you? Hi. I just, um, I, I, we were just in the car park earlier and I saw there was a heap load of braking fluid that had come out from underneath there. So 
I just okay. recommend that these people come to you. You guys English? The Spaniard? Yeah, yeah. English. Next time, get us 10% off bring your business. You must be kidding. Sparking like a true mechanic. What end was it? Was it at your front? It was uh, just here. Just yeah. here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, look. Well. Big corner. Big corner. Right through there, wasn't there? Yeah. How long are you going to take you? Um, until my boss gets back. He's going to be back in 20 minutes, but it's a Spanish 20 minutes. Why don't you come back about uh, after 4.30, yeah? 30. What I'll do is I'll check it. If it's leaking badly, you'll have to leave it or get it towed. Yeah. But, I mean, I can see some spray there, so you might have a leak. Yeah. I can make it safe for you so you can get yeah, it to your local okay. garage. Uh, but yeah, I, I, Is that okay? I want it safe. Um, well, I got nothing yeah. better to do. Leave me the keys and I'll have a quick look at it. Okay, I got them. Result. An oil stand t-shirt and a closed garage is all the convincing the Max need to hand over their vehicle. I'm Paul, these guys call me Pablo, so ask for Pablo when you get back. Alex and Jess slip away quietly. But before Paul can make his getaway, a genuine garage customer pulls up. He could throw a spanner in the works and Paul needs to get rid of him quickly or his cover could be blown. Better on. No, not our back, okay. Job done. As soon as the Max turn the corner, Paul takes their car for a test drive from which it will never return. At the arranged time, the Max turn up to find the garage open. The hustlers knew they had a one hour window when it would be closed for an afternoon siesta. But the real mechanics have never heard of the mysterious Pablo. It was here and there was a bird outside. The truth slowly dawns on the marks. The car is gone. Popped into the shop round the corner, came out, brake fluid coming out of the wheel of the car, and a nice young couple said, ah. I know a mechanic around the corner, follow me. And I've left the car with him. And the people in the tire place next door are denying all knowledge of anybody else. I think I've been exceedingly foolish. And uh, if I were to go to the police, they'd laugh at me. This scam uses a classic technique. We put the marks into a very difficult situation and then manipulate them into making the decision that we want them to make. Nobody wants to drive an unsafe car. Always be careful when taking unsolicited advice from strangers. And whatever you do, never leave anything of value with somebody outside of a company. If they can't get in and you can't get in, come back later. How are you? Nice to see, see you. you. Money won is twice as sweet as money earned. So say goodbye now. And money won from a celebrity is even sweeter. I am on the verge of crying. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Let's see if you can do it. Oh. In the Celebrity Kong Games. Hello. Hello. Hi. The hustlers have come to a former bank vault to take on the ex-Commonwealth swimming champion who led Team GB out at the Beijing Olympics, the Man Mountain, Mark Foster. Nervous about today? No. Not pretty yeah. yeah. Interested, intrigued. OK, standard yeah. question we ask everyone, are you competitive? Yes. So you're going to make a real effort? Yes. OK. Yeah. Lead the way. So Max definitely up for the challenge. Welcome to the vault. It's time for Paul to explain what the hostlers have in store. See, I asked if you were bricking it. Oh, <laughs> this is real BBC gold. Yeah. So, uh, as you can see, not quite, a, not quite a real thing. But there's a bit of weight in there. Definitely a bit of weight. About the same weight of an average brick? Yeah. Yep. This is kind of one of those physical and mental challenges. Mm -hmm. You have to pick up all five bricks okay. simultaneously with one hand. Okay. Ten pounds? Ten pounds. Used to being in at the deep end, Mark accepts the ten pound bet. Tenor. Used pounds. Yeah. You might as well say goodbye now. Very used. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Remember, I have to do it. Or you so get your you, tenor back. OK. So there is a way of doing it. You want yeah. to show me at the end? Uh, yeah. OK. It's game on. Can he lift all five bricks with just one hand? Wow. That one's not going to work. 
not like that. You get ready to catch that one. <laughs> I'm getting ready to catch these. Yeah. They were quite heavy actually. Oh my god. It's looking good. Have the hostlers met their match? Maybe the first person to do it without them falling like that. Yeah, yeah, that other hand's coming in here. Oh, nice. yeah. Class one. Well, we've been trying it. Club one will get that. He goes again. This man doesn't know when he's beat him. Is piling them high the answer? That no. <laughs> I think that could have cost you dear there, actually. Yeah. Okay. Are we giving up? Come on, focus. Finally, he admits defeat. But to win the bet, Paul needs to succeed when Mark has failed. For ten pounds. Yeah, go on. All right, here we go. Can he do it? That's it. And you lift them all up like that. Paul makes it look easy. <laughs> you want to hit someone? <laughs> <laughs> and that's because, once you know how, it is. Paul carefully stacked the five bricks so that there was an opening down the middle. He could then reach down and use the one on the bottom as a handle to lift the whole stack off the table. So Mark loses his tenor. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Mark. You. Right. We're going to go spend your time. Right? That's another celebrity hustled. Very simple when you know how. If you're planning a holiday this year and don't want to run into any hustlers, here are some helpful tips to make sure you stay safe. Number one, always keep your wits about yourself. Just because you're abroad, it doesn't mean you're not at risk from hustlers or criminals. In fact, as a tourist, you're probably even more at risk. If you do go out for a few drinks, then make sure you stay in control and you know exactly how to get back to your hotel. And remember never to accept the lift from an unlicensed cab. Pre-book a taxi or get the number of a reputable company from the hotel desk before you go out. When you're away on holiday, the last thing you want to worry about is everything you've left behind at home. With almost 300,000 domestic burglaries in the UK every year, people rely on home security systems to keep their belongings safe. But whether you're away or at home, even state-of-the-art alarms are no match for the hustlers in the silent alarm sting. Jess has been out looking for a specific type of house. It needs to have an alarm system and the owner must be at home. Having found one that fits the bill, she's noted down the company name on the external alarm box and has looked up the property's phone number using an online directory service. She puts in a call. Well, hi there, I'm calling from security. Are you aware that your silent alarm has been set off? If it's been set off within the last uh, 15 minutes, have you been at home? Well, whenever a silent alarm goes off, it's our policy to send out a couple of technicians straight away, because obviously we need to make sure that everything's OK. So Jess has found a security-conscious Mark who's bought her story and is now expecting some technicians to take a look at his alarm. OK, thank you very much. OK, bye. He won't be disappointed. Oh, hi there. I'm from the security company. Are they giving you a call? Yeah. Your alarm seems to be going off. Are you monitored? Okay. Um, I just really want to check the sensors that you've got. If you got one up here, yeah, um, that's registering clean. Do you have one down here, sir? No, I don't think so. Okay. It's the one on the front door that's uh, the one giving us the problem. Um, Do you have um, your front door keys? Because sometimes when you lock the door, if the um, if the temperature changes, sometimes these are um, misaligned. Alex is using technical talk to make the Mark think they need to carry out a standard engineer's test. Yeah, there's a set on that. Yeah. Can I try locking your door, sir? Yeah. Sometimes the deadlocks just shift with wooden frames. So if you don't mind, I'll lock the door, and no. if you just set it, we'll well, see what we, happens. We do both locks, actually, when we go out. Can I ask you just to put your code in there? Just, just your code. I'll look away, obviously, I don't want to. 
great and uh, just uh, switch it off. That seems to be fine. Are, are you going to be setting might be the local exchange. Today? We might be. We're going out. Yeah. Okay. Well, right. if you if um, it goes off again, yeah. we'll let yeah. you know. The test has shown that everything is in order. Sure, I'm sorry to bother you, and uh, we'll the Mac now thinks his alarm system is fully functional again. Of course, there was nothing wrong with it in the first place. The Mac's house is now empty, just as the hustlers knew it would be. The Mac told them himself. We might be, we're going out, yeah. OK. But they're still faced with a locked and alarmed property. How can they possibly get an entry? Oh. Easy. When Alex and Paul visited the house earlier, they were after two things. First, the alarm cord. Can I ask you just to put your code in there? And Paul may have been looking away, but the hidden camera on his clipboard wasn't. And whilst Paul was keeping the map busy, Alex was outside making a plasticine imprint of the front door key, giving them everything they needed to burgle the Mac's house. Paul punches in the cord to deactivate the alarm. They don't want any real technicians turning up. Alex heads straight for a set of car keys that he spotted on his first visit. It's payday. This burglary has just stepped up a notch. Alex and Jess install hidden cameras in the sitting room to capture the robbery on film. We're set. Yep. Three. Oh, she's heavy. Jess keeps an eye out for neighbours as Alex and Paul walk off with a 32-inch plasma TV. Why am I the one walking backwards? Why is that? With the unexpected bonus of the car, they're getting out as quickly as they can. Alex checks out his new set of wheels, a £17,000 convertible. And they're gone. The whole burglary took a matter of minutes. Less than an hour later, the Marks return home, not noticing that there's a lot more parking space than usual. As they get out of their car, they see that all the lights are on in the house. The Mark naturally thinks back to the unexpected visitors he had earlier in the day. Well, I had a phone call earlier to say our control had gone off. And they said they were sending some people around with two guys turned up, which we presume was from the company. Yeah, I think that was them. Always check ID before you let anybody in your house. If you're unsure about their credentials, call the company they claim to work for and check again. Once they're inside your house, never leave them unattended. Now, if you're unsure about your house alarm, if you think that your code has been compromised, then change it. In fact, the more often you change it, the more secure you'll be. Whenever you invite somebody into your home, somebody you've never met before, you need to identify them. If you've got any doubt whatsoever, let them wait at the door while you make a phone call. If they're comment, they'll disappear immediately. If they're not, they'll wait patiently. Never give out PIN codes, never give out details to anybody unless you are absolutely certain. When on holiday, it doesn't get much better than relaxing in the sun with a drink in your hand. Except if that drink is free. The hostlers are going to show you how to win drinks from your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hostlers always have the edge. And you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. I'll have a gin and tonic, please. Alex is out for drinks in a seaside bar. But he's not planning to spend his own money. All right, OK, look. Um, straightforward challenge. The winner is the person who can open this bottle. But can't use a bottle opener. So I think a teeth. I think a teeth. You can, yeah, you look as if you could do it with your teeth, but don't, please. No, I, no, I know, no, honestly. No, you can't use your teeth. No body parts involved, I'm afraid. Eye, eye sockets or <laughs> nose. Nose. Or, 
The only thing you have is uh, you've got to use this piece of paper. This is going to be our, our yeah. bottle. Hold on. You have to draw a lollipop. <laughs> there you go. This is our opener. Uh, so you've got to use this piece of paper to get this bottle open. Can you fold it? Yeah. You can fold it if you like. It does make the paper stronger, doesn't it? Yeah. But just to make it strong enough to open up the bowl. Can I touch the Yeah. If it isn't, we'll get one that, that you're happy with. You happy with that one? Yeah, I'm happy with that one. If I do it, will you at least oh. pay for the beer and a couple of more? <laughs> Shall I do it? Yeah. yeah. It's fucking it. Yes, but how? How is he going to fold it? It costs a beer to find out. Oh. Maybe he's going to hit it with a pipe and then go and get it. Look at me, loop it around and pull it up. Oh, you should do it off like the clipper. Oh, why didn't you think of that earlier? Oh my goodness. It's not like, not the, not the doing the clippers. Oh. Thank you very much. Alex folded the paper in half lengthways, then again, and again, and one final time. He then folded the whole thing in half once, and again. The paper was then 64 times thicker and strong enough to be used as a lever against his hand to pop off the top. There you go. You can oh, ask the paper that at the bar. Yeah. <laughs> that legal, legal currency here, is it? <laughs> Getting a good exchange rate on your foreign currency makes all the difference to your holiday spending money. So if the rate was, say, 25 yen to one pound, and someone offered you 50 yen to one pound, you'd be mad not to take it, wouldn't you? Right next door to London Stansted is this busy airport hotel, with an exclusive traveler's bar and eye-catching aerial acrobatics. It's the perfect setting for the currency swindle. With such unusual entertainment on offer, it's not hard for Paul to strike up a conversation with some strangers. Step one, the icebreaker. You seen this? Yeah, I was, I was, I was quite amazed. I looked up and I was like, cool little find this place, actually. If you ever use the airport, this is a place to come and wait. You're going anywhere? Yeah. I'll just go back up to Glasgow. Just, um, fortunately, I'm stuck here until a friend arrives. Now that Paul has got two new friends, it's time for his old friends, businessman Alex and his girlfriend Jess, to make their entrance. They're here to do a little business deal with Paul. Take your time. Sorry, uh, I've got a flight. Right. Good to see you. Hiya. Oh. How are you? Very good. Good. Where are you off to? Going to Geneva. Thanks. Uh, well, Pleasantries over, it's time for the deal. All right, uh, what have we got? I got 600. Just, oh, that's good. Yeah. OK. Is that cool? Can you get any more? Because I've actually got 52,000 yen here. What's that? Well, what's that? That's 1,000. Well, it's 2,000, but I'm doing it for 1,000. The marks can't help overhearing that sums of money are being discussed. Alex is offering to sell Paul Japanese yen at an amazing exchange rate. The exchange rate's 25. 0 0.012. I'll do for 50. Do it for 50? Yeah. If you told me it was that much on the phone, then I would have tried to get more. But well, can't you get some more now? ATM, that's all it's going to give me. As luck would have it, Alex is in possession of more foreign currency than Paul can afford to buy. If only there was someone else nearby with money in their pockets, up for making a quick yen. You're not travelling to uh, Japan anytime <laughs> soon, are <laughs> Not in any plans. Well, you don't. You, well, look, here, here's the deal. Now to rob the marks in and give them. The hard sell. Um, I've just come over from Japan because I work for a big investment bank. And believe it or not, they're still giving us a lot of money to go out and do business with. If I go and change it in an exchange place, they ask for passports and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And if I leave a paper trail that I've changed that money back, I can get into trouble with my, uh, my employer. Okay. So what I'm trying to do with my friend Paul here is um, the exchange rate at the moment is 25 yen to one pound. I'm happy to do it. You're giving us 50? 50. 50. 
for one pound, so double it up. It would seem like everyone's a winner here. Alex gets to keep some of his leftover business expenses without leaving a paper trail, which could get him in trouble with his boss. And the marks get Japanese yen at half price, which they can exchange back into pounds, effectively doubling their money. But to make sure the marks buy in, they first need the convincer. Have you got the exchange rates on that? Yeah, yeah, can you get them? Just so you see, I'm not, I'm not like messing with you. Paul shows the marks a currency exchange website on his mobile phone. They can clearly see today's rate is 25 yen to one pound. What website are you on? TOH. Well, that's like up to date. Yeah. You're making two to one. I'm not going to say no to make extra money. I know. You know what? Times are hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they are. are. The marks want in. How much cash have you got? I'll leave two. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. It's 11,500. What I'll do is I'll give you... Give them 12,000. 12,000, because I don't... Alex even rounds it up to the nearest thousand. The Macs have got themselves a great deal. Well, he's going to hold the cash. Yeah, do, it, do it separately, don't go in like... They hand over 230 pounds to a guy they've just met in a bar. Thank you. Like we, um, yeah, no, we have... As soon as the deal is done, Alex and Jess leave. After all, they've got a plan to catch. Hey, good to meet you. Thank you. Enjoy. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna head up and change that. Okay. Go get my flight. And it's not long before Paul also says sayonara to his new friends. Thank you so much. Double your money. That's so cool. That's up in a week as well. And it's about to get a whole lot worse when she discovers what her fistful of yen is really worth. Four thousand yen. Yeah, it's a really good deal. I mean, it was really nice to do that, really, to be honest. We expect to make at least 400 and 20 pounds. It showed us the exchange rate on the thing, so it's cool. Well, what, what website are you on there? Um, TRH. Well, that's like up to date, yeah. Of course, you shouldn't always trust what you see on the internet. That currency website was knocked up by the hustlers themselves, and 25 yen to one pound is probably the worst exchange rate in history as the marks could have discovered in any current newspaper. Is that what the exchange rate is today? 139.8? This is worth 75 quid. What? The rate's not 25 to 1, not even Alex's generous 50 to 1. That day's genuine rate is 140 yen per pound. So the marks haven't doubled their money. In fact, they're 150 pounds down on the deal. We've been mugged off. I can't even This scam works really well because Paul employs a couple of psychological touches. On his phone, he's got the website, so it seems quite genuine. Also, he uses yen as a currency. Now, a lot of people know the currency, but don't quite know the exchange rates, not like the dollar or the euro, which is very popular. Never get involved in any sort of deal that you haven't organised yourself, and especially with people that you've never met before. You should always buy your foreign money either from a reputable currency exchange or a bank. This is The Real Hustle on Holiday. In this series, Alex, Jess and Paul expose to our hidden cameras the scams that cheat tourists and travellers out of their hard-earned holiday money. On tonight's show, how one hour's parking could cost you your life savings. DJ Christian O'Connell gets emotional over a lost tenor. I am the verge of crying. And why hotel guests shouldn't trust this nice man in a suit. Oh my sake! All the people on this show have been hustled for real. And after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams.
When you're on holiday, you may think twice about carrying around high-end cameras or expensive jewellery. But you may not realise that you're still carrying around something else of great value to hostlers. Your identity. This is the Passport Coolout. Paul has come to this tourist spot outside Malaga Cathedral in Spain. Along with his fellow hostlers, he's going to steal the passports from these American holidaymakers. But not by picking their pockets. The hostlers are going to make them hand their passports over of their own free will. So how will they do it? First, Paul sends a text to Alex and Jess, who are waiting for his signal. In many countries, you must always carry ID, like a passport, and can be spot-checked by the authorities at any time. But do you know exactly what the police look like when you're on holiday? Sometimes, all it takes is a blue jacket and a walkie-talkie to look the part. And a convincing accent. Can I see your passport, please? Yeah. I also need to see your passport, it's not a problem. See? Of course Alex isn't radioing police headquarters. He's actually talking to Jess, who's just out of sight in the car. Yeah, hold on, oh, sorry, just on? some report, we're just doing some check. One of the girls hands over her passport even before Paul can get his one out as a convincer. You have a passport? Stolen passports can be used for identity theft, illegal immigration, even terrorism. So it's no wonder they fetch considerable sums on the black market. Alex now has two genuine passports in his hands, and he's not planning to give them back. Hola. Hola. There seems to be a problem with his radio. One moment, I have to check uh, with the radio in the car. Hola. Hola. Si. It's a real pain, you've got to carry your passport everywhere here. And they don't... Whilst Paul keeps the marks talking, Alex is in his car and gone. Oh, <laughs> By the time they realise what's happened, it's too late. The last thing the hustlers want now is for the girls to phone the real police. Uh, me, I'm with, uh, so Paul beats them to it. Uh, uh, yes, yes, I speak English, thank you. A police officer just came up to us and he asked for our passports and then got in a car and drove away. Yeah, like, what, two minutes ago? He says he's been called around the corner and he's, he's coming right back. He just got called on a... What? Yeah, it, they said that they've got something going on nearby and they called everybody and he's responded to say that he has three passports. I'm guessing they're ours. All right, well, okay. Yeah, that's my number. All right. He doesn't speak very good English, but basically, take about 10 minutes. He's gone around, if somebody's stolen something, who I guess looks like us. Likely story, but the fake phone call has bought the hostlers a little more time. No, all Paul has to do is disappear without arousing suspicion. Can you look after that for just a second? Oh, I'll go walk around. He said it's just around the corner. I'm just gonna have a look and come back. As proof that he's coming back, he leaves his book with the marks. He'd finish reading it anyway. Before long, it dawns on the marks that Paul, the policeman, and their passports won't be coming back. We think some people just stole our passport. I can't, like, I can't yeah. believe it happened. It just it seems so they, surreal. <laughs> It was like a Spanish police officer and he came up to us and asked for a passport. Which we thought was normal because we've heard that they do that, like check foreigners. And now we don't have our passport. When you're in panic, you're just vulnerable, super vulnerable. This is a really clever use of social compliance and there are two techniques at work here. First of all, when asked to do something by the police, most people do as they're told. But remember, in a foreign country, you may not know what the police uniform looks like exactly. And if someone else is there, confirming that everything appears to be legitimate, then you tend to follow along. And that's what's the core of this scam. 
Some countries require you to carry your ID at all times, but you should avoid carrying your passport and always check the credentials of anybody claiming to be from the authorities. If they are genuine, then they won't mind verifying this for you. Passports can be abused in many, many ways. They can be falsified, they can have photos substituted, they can be copied, uh, numbers can be taken, they can swap. There's a variety of uh, ways they can be used, and basically it's identity theft. They do get stolen, so please be very careful. How are you? Nice to see, see you. you. Money won is twice as sweet as money earned. As we'll say goodbye now. And money won from a celebrity is even sweeter. I am on the verge of crying. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Let's see if you can do it. Oh. In the Celebrity Kong Games. This week, the hustlers are paying a visit to the Absolute Radio Studios in central London. They're here to take on Sony Award-winning breakfast show host, Christian O'Connell. Hello. Hi. They meet him in the radio station bar after his show, planning to relieve him of some of his hard-earned showbiz wages. You ever been conned? Um, yes, I've been married for 10 years, so every day. Oh. But you never had, like, uh, someone try and sell you speakers out of a white van or... You oh, know, yeah, yeah, I bought a, a stereo at a car boot sale. How was that? Never get an electrical item at a car boot sale. Where did you okay. take it back? Back to a field. It's gone. I paid £25 for it, got it home, and it was just full of sand in the back. <laughs> it was the most expensive sand you could ever buy. £25 for yeah, yeah. some sand. sand. Yeah. Mm. Time for Alex to throw down the challenge. So, now, look, we've got you down here for a serious reason. Uh, it's all for ten pounds. <laughs> so we money. got the money, sweetheart. Even the uh, money. There you go. Give the money to Jess, actually, because she, she's she's our, she, Jess she always gets the money. Yeah. She always gets the money. So what what we've got here is uh, just some random bits that we got from around the office. We found some string, we've got some matches, I think. and it's a very simple challenge. Uh, you have to lift this table without touching it. Now there are a few rules. Um, you can't put anything underneath it to help you lift it. Mm -hmm. And one of these mugs, whichever one you want, has to remain on the table. That's to make sure you don't tip it over or anything. And the rest of the stuff can go. The rest of the stuff can go, you can use it. I mean, I can tell you that, you know, you need some of the stuff that's on the table in order to do this. I mean, I saw something similar to this when I used to watch MacGyver. Oh, so... no, we've got a MacGyver oh, watcher. Yeah. Oh, we're busted. You <laughs> picked the wrong we're guy busted. for oh, this, no. trust me. Why have you given me such a difficult one? Where's the pee in the cup? That's what I was hoping for. That's harder. It seems like an impossible task, but Christian isn't ready to throw in the towel. Any ideas? I mean... Can I use the string and just uh, make like a cat's cradle and suspend that? Yeah, only you can't attach or put anything underneath the table. I can't put anything underneath it. No. Well, how am I supposed to lift it? Could I turn the table upside down and the attach something to it? No, because remember, remember you can't top. touch the table. And the mug has to be on the top. Has to stay there. You Could I give use... you the apple and you do it? You lift the table and you get this apple as a reward. You're not allowed to delegate it, you have to do it yourself. Oh, crikey. That's, that's actually pretty good. That's yeah, a do you like that? Idea. Yeah? Could I create a <laughs> make a hot air balloon? Um, <laughs> what are the Take matches here go. for? Anytime you want to give up, by the way, and just kiss goodbye to that tenor. Yeah, no, because then know. I could see you're all smugly looking at me like there's no <laughs> yeah. way, there's no way this thick breakfast show DJ's going to be doing it. I don't want to prove you guys right. <laughs> yeah. I am on the verge of crying. So I've got to use devil's magic now. Oh. Ah. Yeah, see, I'm on to you. <laughs> uh, I've got no idea. Do you want me to show you? Yes, go on then. He's finally run out of ideas and the table hasn't moved an inch. You'll like this because you're... Over to the professional. So I'm going to use pretty much everything that's on the table. I'm going to use the apple by taking it off the table and therefore reducing the weight, so I'm using it. Um, no same goes for the paper clips. Sorry. The glue's gone, there's no need for it. This... Too heavy, can't use it. Oh, nothing, that's not fair, come on. What I am going to use is... I'll show you. I'm going to wet these napkins. The trick seems to involve some soggy napkins. Christian is still baffled. Okay, Paul, can I ruin your tea? Mm. Lovely. Any idea? No. I got space. You got space. Ready? Create a vacuum. Oh, this is good. Ready? Lifting the table. Come on. Without touching it. 
and the mug staying on the table. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. That is a fantastic trick. That's... Oh! Whoa! <laughs> there you go. I'm genuinely it. impressed. That was brilliant. So Alex wet the napkins to form an airtight seal against the table. And the matches burnt up all the oxygen in the cup, creating a strong enough vacuum to take the weight of the table. That's another celebrity tenor for the Hostler's bank account. Great sport, thank you very much. Great trick. Thank you so much. Of course, I knew that really, I just didn't want to yeah. read it. Yeah. 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 So I've it's done this so scary. many yeah. times. <laughs> When you're on holiday, you don't want to worry about your home being burgled while you're gone. Here are some tips to keep your house and possession safe. Obviously, you should fit an alarm with a code known only to you and people that you trust. Another tip is to get to know one of your neighbours so that you can look after each other's property when you're away. Now, you probably know about electronic timers that plug into the wall, but there are other devices too. Here's an example. This is something that can plug directly into a light socket. You put the bulb in here, and at dusk, it switches on automatically for a given period of time, which you program here. And finally, cancel the milk, and don't tell the taxi driver who picks you up how long you're gonna be away, or that there's nobody home. This is the seaside town of Bournemouth. When the sun's out, people flock to the beach in droves every day. But with this many sunbathers coming out all at once, parking spaces near the seafront are at a premium. This is the seaside parking swindle. Jess has come to a busy clifftop parking area right above the beach. But the parking instructions seem a little confusing. Maybe the occupants of this arriving car can help her make sense of them. Are you parking here? Yeah. yeah, do you know how this works? I've heard of it before. I've heard of it, but I've never actually done it. In fact, with this hot weather, helpful motorists turn up all day long. Excuse me, are you parking here? Yeah, we are. Would you be able to help me with this? I'm not really too sure. I don't know if you've done it before, what I'm doing. You have to pay with your phone? Yeah. Do you know how this works? Uh, no, I've never seen it you just, have, you just have to text it in. The signs along this road state that this is a pay-by-text zone a new parking concept that is springing up all over the country. Yeah, it's all the way around here. There's someone who's got a ticket up there that I saw when I came down. Motorists need to pay for their parking by sending a text with their details to the local authority. I think it goes, it actually goes through to the council to say, to register. Yeah, that is the That they've started to do. This complete stranger seems to be familiar with this type of payment scheme, having used it elsewhere. The parking lot, so you just have to do that, don't you? Hang on, I've got to find a car. Where from? I the Not wanting to get parking tickets, Jess and the motorists start writing their text to the local council. Create message, yes? First of all, it's the parking zone number. Is that a parking location? Is that about seven, eight dots here, isn't it? Next, how long they plan on staying. And then you just put how many hours you're here for, don't you? so, yeah. And the car registration. You need to put your number plate. I know, I know. So what about the payment? For that, they'll need some plastic. Now it's your name on the card. And then credit slash switch card number. So that's the long one there. Now what? Uh, expiry date. Do you know what the three digit security thing is? Yeah, that we got Oh, the last three, all oh, right. So what's really going on? Why is Jess standing here all day making sure motorists follow instructions on the parking signs? because they were all put here by the hostlers. Alex, Paul and Jess visited this beachfront road just after sunrise earlier that day. As any local resident would know, parking is actually free here. But the signs the hostlers put up were designed to trick any visitors or tourists into thinking they had to pay one pound an hour for the privilege. Jess even added a touch of authenticity by handing out some parking fines. And that number on the signs was nothing to do with the local council. It went straight to a mobile belonging to the hostlers. The marks thought that they were only paying one pound an hour for their parking. But they actually texted their names,
credit card numbers, expiry dates and security codes directly to the hostlers. Everything criminals need to clean out a bank account. It's a clever way of paying, isn't it? Yeah. Send. Please wait. Message sent. Message sent. <gasps> Perfect. Brilliant. Have you sent yours? Yeah. Has it gone through? Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Take care. Sorry, take Don't be daft, it's fine. It's more than fine. The Marks head for the beach, happy that the parking fee is money well spent. It would have been cheaper to get a ticket. So what did the Marks make of the new parking scheme? We didn't quite understand the new system they got up there. We had to use our mobile phone. You've got to enter in your, enter in your car number and then put your, put your credit card number in it as well. I suppose you, you just trust it really, don't you? A good afternoon is about to turn sour when the Marks are handed their full credit card details on a slip of paper. Oh, f off. I've just been completely sharp. I think what happens is when you come to park, you're too frightened not to, you're frightened to get a ticket, and you do it because you, we were under pressure. So I think you, a lot of people could be done with that. It's terrible, isn't it? This is really a very simple scam to pull off. It takes advantage of the fact that most of us don't pay much attention when paying for something like parking. Most of us will simply follow the instructions and then go on our way. And remember, this will target tourists because they won't be able to recognise what a proper sign looks like. But a clever con artist will make sure that their signs look exactly like the real thing. Always be cautious when handing over your credit card details. Make sure you know where those details are going to end up. So if you're unsure, call the local council, find out and proceed. When on holiday, it doesn't get much better than relaxing in the sun with a drink in your hand. Except if that drink is free. The hostlers are going to show you how to win drinks from your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hostlers always have the edge. And you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. I will have a gin and tonic, please. Jess is out for a drink in a seaside bar but she doesn't plan on picking up the tab. So when you like go out, this is how you dress? Well, What are you dressed yeah. for right now? Just going out. Yeah? Cash. And do you always wear a tie? <laughs> not always, no. Do you mind taking your tie off? <laughs> but you don't get many girls asking you to take it off, do you? Loads. Really? Thank you. I've got, um, I've got a really good trick with a tie. Do you want to see it? It's a challenge. I want you to take one hand at the end of the tie, the other hand on the other end. Without letting go, I want you to tie a knot right in the middle. So, in the end, it's going to look just like that. Without letting go? Without letting go. Right. How many knots do you want? How many knots can you give me? I'll be impressed if you do one. All right. But if you can do two, then go for it. OK. OK. Tie a knot. What's that? Right, you got it. Not a knot. Okay, there. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, no, it's fine. Are you going to take? Um, if you want. Can you use mine? Hold on. Hello, Nina. Um, it's. it's uh, no, that's. That, well, that was cheating because you grabbed the end. You grabbed another end. And it didn't work anyway. Both you know what? I don't think you can do it. I don't know. Okay, if I can do it, how about you buy me a drink? I'd love to. You'd love to buy me a drink yes. if I can do it. You can't let go. Can't let go. All right. Okay, so I'm going to have one hand like you did and the other like you did. I'm not going to let go. Okay, sure. There is your. Uh, not. That's <laughs> <laughs> very good. I will have a gin and tonic, please. It's simple. Jess started with her arms crossed and picked up each end of the tie. Then she uncrossed her arms to produce the knot and a free drink. Was that, 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 was that, was that, was that what your second you, choice, you was it? Do you want your tie back? <laughs> Alex has come to this busy four-star hotel, but he's not checking in. In fact, he's heading straight upstairs without going anywhere near the reception desk. He's here to carry out 
the swipe. Alex makes straight for a room on the 10th floor. And like any genuine guest, he's got a magnetic keycard to open the electronic lock. But this isn't his room. He's about to tidy up in a way that housekeeping never would, by removing all the guest's valuables. This case will come in handy. It's the perfect size for a brand new laptop. The occupants of this room have also been kind enough to leave a wallet lying around, full of credit cards and cash. Happy that he's found everything worth taking, Alex leaves. Not a bad haul, but Alex isn't done yet. There are plenty more rooms in this hotel. Once again, he lets himself in with a key. Even more goodies in this room. But he needs to move fast. Every second that he's in the room could spell disaster. He could be discovered either by hotel staff or worse still, by the room's occupants. Time to head back to the lifts and make a sharp exit with over two and a half thousand pounds worth of other people's stuff. So how did Alex know which rooms were empty? And how was he able to beat the electronic door locks? To find out, we need to rewind. Alex had already been to this floor earlier in the day, wearing the same suit, but with one crucial difference. And this time, he was knocking on doors rather than opening them himself. Oh, hi there. Sorry to disturb. We seem to be having a problem with our key cards. I just need to run it through a few times, reprogram it for your lock. Oh, OK. It's okay. fine. Thank you. Alex was carrying a standard notebook computer with an added extra, a magnetic card reader. I should be fine now. OK. Lovely. Thank you. Enjoy your stay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Just one swipe and he had all the keys data. To make the scam worth his while, Alex needed a number of rooms to rob. So he carried on down the hallway, knocking on every door. Hi there, hello, sorry to disturb. We're having a little bit of a problem with our key cards. All I need to do is swipe it and reprogram it for you. There you go. Having problems with key cards. There you go, that's fine. Thank you. You're fine, thank you, bye. Hi there, we seem to be having a problem with our key card. None of the guests thought twice about handing over their keys to the man with a the badge. They might as well just have handed over their belongings. Down in the hotel bar, Alex immediately set about making use of the key card data he'd collected. A clever piece of software transformed a handful of blank high street gift cards into exact clones of the hotel room keys. Once he jotted the correct room number onto each card, all he had to do was keep an eye on the exit and wait. Hotel guests don't stay in their rooms 24 hours a day. In fact, during the daytime, most rooms are empty most of the time, while the guests are out going about their business. And Alex didn't have to wait long to recognise some of the guests he'd called on earlier on their way out. He matched the faces to the room numbers, and once he knew a couple were vacant, he headed back upstairs. And whilst the Macs were out enjoying themselves, Alex broke into their rooms, stealing all their valuables. 20 minutes later, the guest that never checked in, checked out. The unfortunate guest returned to the hotel at different times, but they all had the same nasty surprise waiting for them. Where did you put my purse? I didn't have it. Can I take it with me? 
Where's our laptop? Where's my laptop? Where's my laptop? Are you kidding me? Oh, don't do this. Wait, did I take my purse with No, I'm, I'm no. not joking. I didn't. What the Check into the- Are you joking? Shit. Um. Oh, mate. It's got everything in. Hang on, let me try your phone. Because then, do you think they're in Where Oh my god. Are you kidding me? I left my phone here. Oh my sake. We caught up with both sets of guests to get their reactions. We just came in and I just looked for my purse and it wasn't here. We've just come back and my laptop and stuff's gone. My phone, iPod, my laptop. It's got everything in, all my credit cards, my work ID. It's got everything in. It's a quality hotel, so I didn't really expect this to happen. If you are taking valuables when you travel, it's important to protect them at all times. But most importantly, protect your keys. Particularly with electronic keys, these can be copied easily and shouldn't be handed to anybody, even if they appear to work for the hotel. Whenever you're staying in a hotel, if you get asked by somebody for your key card or for your PIN number, always check with reception. Be absolutely certain you're speaking to a bona fide member of staff. It's just too easy for a con man to walk into a hotel, look smart and pretend to be a member of staff and get access to your room. This is The Real Hustle on Holiday. In this series, Alex, Jess and Paul expose to our hidden cameras the scams that cheat tourists and travellers out of their hard-earned holiday money. On tonight's show, how to lose £35,000 in a matter of seconds. Do you have your paperwork? TV star Angelica Bell picks up the lunch bill. I'm so stupid! And Alex gets Larry and Legless. It's gone. My iPhone's gone. All the people on this show have been hustled for real. And after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. This is Porta Venus on the Spanish Costa del Sol, playground of the jet set and the super rich. But wherever there's this much money, you can be sure to find hustlers and con artists sniffing around for a piece of the action. Presenting Paul as the agent, Alex as the footballer, Jess as the wag, and this guy as the mark in the boat tire scam. Paul's here for phase one, the hook. He's come for an appointment to see a man about a boat. Hey, John. Okay, How are you? This is John, who works for a yacht hire company. Uh, this is perfect. I hope. <laughs> Paul likes the look of John's boat, but he's not thinking of hiring it for himself. Yeah, we got these clients. Um, this guy's a bit of a nightmare, okay. just so you know. He's a footballer. He needs to go out Tuesday, and uh, what we had laid up for him is, well, it's tanked, frankly. So uh, he's going to come up here, have a look around, if he's happy with it. Just go ahead. So Paul's client wants to hire a yacht, but the boat he had lined up has broken down. This could be the ideal replacement. He's going to give you a check today. Yeah. He'll pay you guys directly. Mm -hmm. I'll come back and make sure everything's OK. I'm going to leave him with you if that's OK. You mind? He's a yeah. bit, he's kind of all flash and all cash. So, all right. you know, if you can put up with it for half an hour. All flash and all cash. That must be rich footballer Alex. Here he comes with his glamorous girlfriend Jess for phase two, the bait. It's funny because, you know, good. good. Hiya. Hiya. Now that everyone's here, the scam's full steam ahead. So, uh, what do you think? 
Uh, it looks great. Can we have a look around? Yeah. Absolutely. If you don't mind, I'm going to leave you to it. And, uh, hopefully, I'll catch you before uh, before you're done. All right. Thanks very much for okay. coming out. No really no appreciate worries. your help. Paul leaves Alex and Jess with the mark. He's going to give them the grand tour of the yacht. If it all goes to plan, Paul will be back later to seal the deal. Good job I didn't wear my heels today, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you. Nice. Wow. I'll let you on board, I'll show you then. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's lovely. It's slightly bigger than the one we had last yeah. year. Already impressed, yeah. they head downstairs to inspect the three luxurious cabins and ensuite oh, bathrooms. Yeah. And then complete the tour on the upper deck. Are you planning to have it for the day? Yeah, yeah. I think. Monday. Yeah, I think it's next Tuesday. Yeah, start for one day. We're sold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was easy. What are you not going to like? You know. <laughs> it's just what this rich young couple is after. All that's left to do is to pay for the day's hire. Can you spell that for me? Just as Paul promised, Alex makes out a check. It's for a whopping four thousand pounds. Everyone's happy with the deal. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Especially John, who's just made his company four grand in the space of ten minutes. Sounds almost too good to be true. Here comes Paul for the final part of the scam. The catch. So far, everything the hustlers have done is to convince the mark they're genuine customers. But they're not remotely interested in having a day out at sea. They're fishing for what's in the Mark's wallet. Hey, John. What did they say? They're happy. Um, of course, it's the financial side of the arrangement that Paul's really interested in. How much did he pay you? 4,000 on check. You're kidding. Is that right or wrong? What an idiot. Um, it's not right, actually. Uh, he's supposed to pay you guys 3,500. And five to you. And 500 to me. Alex's cheque was for too much money and included the £500 commission that should have gone to Paul. If it's not right, then it's not right. Well, do you want to...? Suggest? This is the crucial moment. Can Paul extract any money from the mark? Do you have any pounds? I mean, do you want to...? No, I've got nothing. Getting Doesn't money. sound good. Has this scam run aground? Um, you got 700 euros. Bingo. The mark remembers he has a big wad of euros. Well, what's 500 pounds in euros? Let's check that. Out. And Paul helpfully calculates the exchange rate into pounds. So 500 pounds is 620 euros or something like that. Well, do you have 600 euros there? Is that your thought? Yeah, I'll, I'll cover the 20. Wanting to do what's right and thinking that he's covered by Alex's check, the mark happily hands over 600 euros in cash. All right, well, that's good. So that's a good deal. So he's taking it for Tuesday. Yeah. Um, he's said paid you. So right. it seems like everyone's a winner. Paul's got 600 euros in his pocket, and the mark has a check for 4,000 pounds. But there's one crucial difference. The euros are real. But of course, the check isn't worth the paper it's written on. The Mark's just fallen for one of the oldest tricks in the book. He's paid out money against the check that will bounce the second he tries to cash it. Well, yeah, obviously I believed it. I wasn't expecting anything to be not right. Then the check was wrong. So he took the equivalent in euros. I mean, I don't see that many checks, so I don't do a lot of the transactions. But, you know, if we do get a check, it's, it's paid in, and then you don't find out until the bank tell you it's... It's not good. This scam works very well because we're offering the boat company an opportunity to make some very easy money. They don't really have to do anything, and they'll just make some extra cash. Also, this scam takes place in a world where people have money. It's boats, it's fast cars, it's marinas. There is a general assumption that the people who are interested in getting boats or are interested in the fast cars, they've got money. If anybody ever puts you in this situation, you should always think it might be a scam. It's been used by con artists for years. In any transaction, always insist on being paid the correct amount, no matter what the circumstances, and wait for that money to clear before acting on it.
Oh, yeah. Nice to see you. Money won is twice as sweet as money earned. And money won from a celebrity is even sweeter. I am the verge of crying. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Let's see if you can do it. Oh. In the Celebrity Kong Games. This week, the hustlers have come to this exclusive Riverside restaurant to do battle with Celebrity Fame Academy contestant and one show reporter, Angelica Bell. Uh, are you hungry? You better be hungry. Peckish. Yeah. Well, they say when you're in, you know, polite company, that one shouldn't You're not gobble. in polite company. You're not one shouldn't, one shouldn't gobble, one should nibble. Oh. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> really? yeah. Go for the gobbling. We'll yeah. yeah. have We will. <laughs> but before getting down to business, they decide it would be rude not to order some lunch. The food here doesn't come cheap. Oh, nice. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Nor does the champagne. I think we could do with a winning. And as for dessert... I'll have four of them. For 75 dabs. It's really good. Four of those. Unusually, the hustlers seem in the mood for splashing the cash. Yeah, they're paying. Well, yeah. How much was it again? 75 pounds. Each. Each. Oh. That's right, these fancy desserts, which come with three aged cognacs, cost an eye watering £75 a pop. Uh, you eat and you drink. You eat and you drink. Yeah. Mm. Oh my god, mm. this is. Mm. Mm. Caramelized hazelnut. Mm. Is, um, it's a good, exceptional. Mm. This is like, amazing. It's a very, very, very good. <laughs> mm. Should we get the bill? Yeah. We should. Can we have the. Um... This is going to be fun. She's right but not for whoever has to pay it. Thank you very much. OK. Ouch. Can't be that bad. Let's that... see. Oh, my God. Yes. That's a lot for four people. <laughs> what do you think? £767.13. and 13 pence. 767 So how are we going to do this? Hmm. OK, well, pass me the bill. Time to serve up Angelica's challenge. I've got a proposition for you. Go on. OK. I'm going to pass you the bill. I want you to hand the bill to whoever you want to pay the bill. Does that sound fair? OK. OK. And that's it, and we leave. That's it. Um, there are a couple of rules um, I'm going to show you. I want you to stand up. I'm going to place the bill on your feet, just like that. Keeping your feet together, heels on the floor if you're wearing heels. I want you to bend over forward, pick the bill up, with both hands, and then pass it to either Paul, Alex, myself, or keep it. Does that sound fair? Mm-hmm. Yeah? So, in order for someone else to pick up the bill, all Angelica needs to do is pick it up herself first, from her feet, and hand it to them. But the hustlers okay. always have a trick up yeah. their sleeves, as she's about to find out. OK, you need to stand next to me, so I need to stand here, because the light's really good, with your heels right against the glass. No, I did have... Feet together. OK. OK? You used to bend over forward. Use both hands, pick up the bill. The challenge is on. Ooh. Can I move my feet? Nope. Nope. Feet flat on the floor, can't move your heels. Bend over forward, pick up with both hands. Bend over forward. Turns out, this is much harder up against a window than standing in the middle of the room. I can't, can't bend, I can't bend my feet. No, you just need to reach over forward and get it. Is this doable? We certainly hope not. <laughs> you know what? I don't think you're going to get it. How long are we going to wait? Do you know what I've realised? I should have drank all that drink because this would have made no difference if I was drunk. <laughs> I'm so stupid! And I might have to pay for this as well and I haven't drunk anything. You know what? Come back to, to the table. She didn't stand a chance because this con is all about balance. When Jess picked up the bill, it looked easy. That's because when she bent her upper half forwards, her bottom half could shift backwards to keep her balanced. But standing against the window, Angelica couldn't shift her weight back, which meant it was physically impossible to bend forwards and pick up the bill without falling flat on her face. We'll call it a tenner and we're even. Unless you would and, like to pay the bill. And in fact, so up. another celebrity hands over a tenner. But the hustlers were kind enough to pick up the hefty lunch bill. At least that's what they told Angelica on their way out. Sorry, madam. The gentleman said you're going to pay the bill. Oh, did they? Yes.
If you're planning a holiday this year and don't want to run into any hustlers, here are some helpful tips to keep your possessions safe. First of all, always be aware of the people around you, especially in busy areas such as airports, train stations or tourist spots. If you feel that people are getting a little bit too close or bumping into you, then you may have just been a victim of pickpocketing. When you're out and about and you have a bag on you, always wear the strap across your body and make sure that you walk with the bag away from the curb to avoid drive-by purse snatchers. Wearing your strap over one shoulder makes it too easy for people to snatch off you. Now, the last thing you want to be doing is walking around a busy marketplace with an expensive watch or necklace. The best advice anybody could give you is to leave all valuable possessions at home in the first place. It's early evening in the historic city of Oxford. Locals and tourists alike are out enjoying the many bars and restaurants in the picturesque centre. Even hustlers need to let their hair down occasionally. Alex, Paul and Jess have come to a popular bar for an evening out. There's a relaxed atmosphere in the bar and everyone is having a good time with their friends. The off-duty hustlers have a drink and Alex orders another and another. Yeah, it was totally difficult. It seems like this particular hustler can't handle his beer. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Paul and Jess aren't too impressed. What? Shush. Alex, you have had enough. You see, that's but you know what? I'm going. Sorry. Jess has had enough of Alex's leery behaviour and leaves. You're just upset. Well, you're not exactly yeah. looking very classy now, are you? I've had enough. We have to run out through it now. I think we should go. No, no. Paul's had enough as well. He takes charge and decides to call it a night. I think we've, we've, we've had enough. No, I just oh, put it down. Come on, All right. <laughs> come on, mate. <laughs> oh. right. The Dudley Moore stuff is really cool. Oh, careful, sorry. Wait, sorry. Alex isn't even able to walk straight enough to get to the exit, and needs some support from the pub furniture to stay upright. Sorry. All right, move. All right, come on. I want to go straight out that way. After making a bit of a scene in the bar, the hustlers finally make it out the front door. Despite appearances, Alex and Paul aren't going off to get a kebab. In fact, suddenly, Alex is perfectly sober. So what just happened? Of course, the hustlers weren't really off duty. They were demonstrating one of the most simple but devastatingly effective scams to target tourists. Yeah. Jess stormed out to draw attention to Alex's drunken behaviour. But Alex wasn't really drunk. His clumsy stumble out of the bar was just a pretense for going through some bargoers' pockets and bags. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. sorry. That was an MP3 player from a woman's handbag being passed off to Paul. She left her bag on the back of her chair an easy target for pickpockets. Sorry, I'm come, sorry on, come on, come on. Excuse me, sorry. And in the process of knocking the man's jacket to the floor, Alex lifted a digital camera and hid it under his coat. As soon as they were outside, the hustlers dropped the act and went off to repeat the whole drunken routine in another pub down the road. Two, two gentlemen. And um, I noticed as they sort of started leaving, he bumped into my chair. I didn't take no notice of it, to be honest. The iPod's gone. Nah. My iPod's gone. I just thought he was a bit drunk and stumbled, to be honest. Wow. There was a camera in the pocket. Uh, he's sitting there just chatting. Someone st stumbled past, knocked my coat onto the ground and picked it up for me. Uh, the other one, who was obviously with him, made excuses for him, which now, in hindsight, I realise was to distract me from what was actually going on. Pretty peed off, <laughs> to be honest. Big pockets are always trying to find new ways to invade your personal space so they can get close to your belongings. Now, this works very well. We've all seen drunken people stagger in and out of pubs, 
And also, it uses the social etiquette, which is quite embarrassing when you're faced with someone who's falling over. People just want to help you up and send you on your way because they don't want you around their surroundings. And so that's perfect for pickpocketing. If you're ever in a restaurant or a bar or anywhere where you know potentially there could be a lot of people around you, then make sure you keep all your purse belongings in sight at all times. And whatever you do, make sure you never put any valuable items in coat pockets hanging on the back of your chair. When on holiday, it doesn't get much better than relaxing in the sun with a drink in your hand. Except if that drink is free. The hostlers are going to show you how to win drinks from your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hostlers always have the edge, and you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. I will have a gin and tonic, please. Paul has come to this Spanish seaside bar for some refreshments, but he hasn't brought any money, just a matchbox. All right, this is a very, very, very simple bet. Okay, um, uh, we don't need these, okay? All you have to do, <coughs> I'll give you a free go. Okay. With one finger, you have to lift it up and stand it so it's on its end, like that, okay? Steady. That's it. <laughs> this is kind of like a sobriety test as well. Well done. Now. You have to do it again, and if you can, I'll buy everybody drinks, but if you can't, you, have, you all have to buy me drinks. That was just the trial run to prove that it can actually be done. From now on, they're playing for drinks. The matches, there is a flea in here, very, very, very well-trained flea. Okay. Exactly the same as before. All you have to do, lift it up. Come on, man. Can you count on you? There's something going on here. It's my wallet that's coming out of. Oh. My mental powers. Yeah, you've done something. Yeah, the mental. <laughs> well, well, you could do it again. You want to try again? Okay. We have to be very fair. There is absolutely nothing inside the box. Well, the flea actually jumped out. You want to pick him up? Pick him up. Drop him back in there. All right. Exactly the same as before. Make sure there's nothing sticky on the glass or anything like that. Yeah. He's done something to <laughs> That's two round of drinks for me. This bet has nothing to do with invisible fleas and everything to do with basic physics. An empty matchbox is always heavier on one side than the other. This is because of the cardboard drawer sitting inside it. When the bar goer first lifted the box, she started with it the right way up, with the cardboard tray on the bottom, and she had no trouble standing the box upright. When they started playing for drinks, Paul secretly turned the tray upside down, so the heaviest side was on top. In this position, it's almost impossible to stand up. The extra weight makes the box overbalance before it's upright, causing it to topple over. Come on, Kim, you know what, two's enough. <laughs> enough. The bar's over there. One hustler one high-vis jacket, and one £35,000 car. Gone in 600 seconds. Alex has come to this busy multi-storey car park to pick up a brand new luxury car. And if his plan works, that's exactly what he'll be driving out of here in just 10 minutes. The car park he's chosen is used by tourists and the general public, and is also a base for a major car rental agency. Alex sets about looking official in his fluorescent jacket, but he needs to work quickly to avoid attracting unwelcome attention. And what he really doesn't need is an employee of the hire car company throwing a spanner in the works. Alex knows he's been spotted and needs to come up with a legitimate sounding reason for being here. Excuse me, are, are all your cars here or just the ones that say? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, it's fine. I'm just working for the car park to see the regulation of how many people are using the car park and everything. Yeah? Okay, thanks. That seems to have done the trick. It's just around the corner downstairs. So just walk down this ramp. 
Do you turn. For the scam, Alex needs some customers to rent one of the cars. Could this be the opportunity he's been looking for? Looks like Alex could be in luck. It's time for Alex to put the plan in gear. He's going to make these girls give him their car. Are you for this one? Yeah. All oh, right. OK. One second, because I've just had a call from them downstairs. Um... Within seconds, Alex is holding the keys to this £35,000 luxury car. I'm going to have to give you a different one. But this one, we've just noticed that there's a slight problem with one of the rear wheels. It's just not behaving properly. Um, do you have your paperwork? The girls already saw Alex on their way to the rental office, so don't question his authority. They hand over all their paperwork. And do you have your exit ticket as well? It belongs to the car, it matches with the car. I'll be 30 seconds, I'm going to come down here. I promise I'll be two seconds, yeah? So far, so good. He's got everything he needs to make his getaway. The other one's a bit more powerful than this one, so you have a bit, a bit more fun. Alex has got his hands on the car, but can he drive it away from right under their noses? He doesn't hang about and makes his way out of the car park, driving straight past the rental office in the process and using the genuine exit ticket for the barriers, which the girls kindly gave him. The whole operation has taken just 10 minutes. <laughs> the Max soon realised something isn't quite right with this situation. Eventually, they decide to ask the rental staff what's going on. I, uh... That friend just took that car. Who? Who took that car? They uh, said there was a problem with the back wheel. He asked for the documents, the key, and the thingy car. No, that's not from us. Just took it. Why have you gave him the ticket to get it as well? Mm. Well, he said he needed. <sighs> when we drove past the park, he was there, wasn't he? Yeah. And then when we came to go to get the car, he was up there, and he was just looking at all the cars. Said, oh, well, the the guy was checking at all the cars. Yeah. Oh no, what's happening? Do you know what's happening? Yeah. Tell him about No, because he's asked me about the cars. And I said no, no, I know nothing. It dawns on the rental agent and the marks that they've been the victims of a con trick and that their car is gone. Some bank swapped it from us. He said there was a problem with the back wheel, didn't there? It just looked like he worked it. Oh, what the hell is going on? You can't, you can't just trust any stranger to be honest. You can't just give a keys to any stranger. We know about, we know about all this crime that's happening. Why would you give a, a keys to someone you don't know? It always amazes us how people drop their guard when they see a fluorescent jacket. And the clever thing about this scam is it fits in perfectly to the scenario. They go up to pick up the car and here's somebody who obviously works for the company because they're wearing a fluorescent jacket. That just makes it easy for Alex to give them instructions, take the car and the paperwork and leave. Modern expensive vehicles are actually quite difficult to steal. They've got sophisticated security systems and sophisticated locks on them. So the best way to be able to steal them is actually to get the keys. If somebody comes up to you and says, give me your keys, unless you're absolutely certain they are who they say they are, don't part with them. Ask that person to go back to the car rental office and double check. If they are who they say they are, they'll walk back with you with no problem whatsoever. And if they're a thief, they'll be on their toes immediately. This is The Real Hustle on Holiday. In this series, Alex, Jess and Paul expose to our hidden cameras the scams that cheat tourists and travellers out of their hard-earned holiday money. On tonight's show...
Paul takes some tourists for a ride. All done? You certainly have to. DJ Toby Anstis gets a good panning. It's so annoying these it days. Is. And the hostlers demonstrate how to ruin a good night out. I feel devastated. <laughs> All the people on this show have been hustled for real. And after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. It's market day in the holiday town of Fuengarola in Spain. Tourists and locals are out to soak up the sun and find a bargain or two. But on this particular morning, there's one extra bric-a-brac stall in the market set up by Alex and Jess. Hey, hey, They're hey, here to hey, make a quick buck in hey, the wrap-up. Hey, hey. hey, There's plenty of interest in the hustler's stall, especially their authentic hand-woven carpets. The whole group of you guys. A girl's holiday. Yeah. Oh. oh, is it? And we can. Who's oh. getting married? Oh, right. Hey, congratulations. congratulations. Cool. <laughs> get a little bit. Get a little bit. Get a little bit. This? You can't get that. That one. Where there's a hen party, there's usually money. I'll tell you what, if, if, you, if you buy a big one, I'll throw this one in. As a wedding gift. Alex goes for the hard sell. Two for the price of one and a half. No. Uh, How much is the big one? As a wedding gift. This one is uh, 70 euros, because it's actually from around here. I reckon we should all do it again. <laughs> but of course, of course you're welcome to try your skills at haggling. 30. <laughs> oh, that's good, I like it. 30. All right, 50. 35. <laughs> These girls are determined not to be ripped off. This one's 120. <laughs> Everything's negotiable. <laughs> In fact, haggling seems to be the order of the day. Let's take 70. How much? <laughs> Is this tourist trying to hustle the hustlers? It's a valiant effort. Um, OK, 100. Alex isn't going to let her walk all over him like a cheap rug. Nine to five and you've got yourself a deal. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> These marks have done well. They've knocked 25 euros off and settled for a price of 95. What a great bargain. You've had the last of our money. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> the hustlers seem to be in a generous mood today. 40. 40. All right. 40. Alex has just made their day. That's a 70 euro carpet for almost half price. You get the little one thrown in from us. And he even throws in the miniature rug as a wedding present. Thank you. Thank you. But his customer service doesn't end there. I'll tell you what, I'll wrap it up for you just so you can take it back. You come back in about 10 minutes? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. yeah? Cool. Do you want us to wrap it for you? Yes, please. All right. Give us 10 minutes and we'll wrap it nice and tight so it doesn't get ripped or come apart. Okay. Yeah? yeah. Alex want... offers a wrapping service so that his happy customers can carry their rugs straight onto the return flights to the UK. Having paid, the Marks explore the market while Alex gets wrapping. It's not long before the carpets are ready to pick up. The Marks are just in time to see Alex putting the last piece of wrapping tape on their package. Hiya. Hi. So, I've wrapped the smaller one inside. OK, great. Yeah. There you go. You've got a little handle. Oh. Hello. Just um, put a little handle on for you. Yeah. So I'm just going to close that up here. Scissors. There you go. Thank you. Very Enjoy. Much. Thank you. Take care. Thank Have a good holiday. Everyone's happy. The hustlers have their money, 
the marks have their packages, but they've actually been stitched up good and proper, as they're about to find out. Most tourists would leave their carpets wrapped until they got home, but we asked the marks to open theirs straight away. No, it's definitely your work. Been hurt. Oh, no, that's a different rug. Yeah, that is that's not the same rug, isn't it? Yeah. Why are you good? Yeah. So. They've just spent their hard-earned euros on a cheap children's play mat. Hopscotch. Is it? If we hadn't unwrapped that till we got back to my house. Oh, I don't know. I'd have cried. Yeah, quite possibly. That was the last of my money. I would gain demand my money back. So how were they fooled? Simple. When Alex showed each monk the open end of their package, what they actually saw was an offcut from another carpet, hiding the garish pink one underneath. And they wouldn't have discovered they'd been conned until it was too late to do anything about it. By which time, both the market and the hustlers would be long gone. You should never let anything out of your sight if you're having it wrapped up. And remember that if you do buy something from a market stall on holiday, you've got absolutely no chance of getting your money back if you are unhappy with your purchase. If you're planning a holiday this year and don't want to run into any hustlers, here are some helpful tips to get you on your way. When traveling abroad, one of the things you'll be dealing with is foreign currency. And this is one of the main things that'll be used to cheat you because you won't be familiar with the different types of money. There's 250 euros. One of these is false, one of these is genuine. There's this one false and that one's genuine. In actual fact, it's very hard to tell. But the real test is in the field. This feels like money and this feels like cheap paper. It's important to familiarize yourself with the currency as much as you can before you go. One of the key things you can do to protect yourself is always check all the money you receive carefully, even if you get it from a reputable source, like a bureau de change. You don't know that the person serving you is necessarily as honest as the company hopes they are, or they may innocently be passing you money that they don't know is counterfeit. When on holiday, it doesn't get much better than relaxing in the sun with a drink in your hand except if that drink is free. The hostlers are going to show you how to win drinks from your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing, but of course the hostlers always have the edge and you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. We'll have a little bet, and we'll use one of these. Okay, I'm going to put it just there like that. Okay, get some change. I was out busking earlier. Got a boy. Lots of euros. This is the idea. We are going to place coins on top of the napkin. We're going to take turns. Whoever runs out of room first on the napkin loses. Okay. All right. That is on the napkin. That is off the napkin. Okay. All right? You can't nudge other coins out of the way. <laughs> if I catch you doing any of that stuff, <laughs> you're out of here. <laughs> okay? So, okay. deal? Deal. You know, just in case I don't get my drinks at the end of it. <sighs> okay, do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? What do you want? You can go first. Okay. Uh, uh, we always start by there's a coin in the middle. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm happy with that. Oh, the tension. Oh, this is done too much. Coins have to be touching each other. And relax. No, no. You can put the coin anywhere. You can put it at the edge here. You can put it anywhere. Oh, interesting move. I see. I never thought of that. I didn't. <laughs> Controversial, but interesting. Oh, right, right. it's on there. 
Are we happy? Adjudicators, ladies? Yeah, That's so. up from the top. I can see napkin on both sides. Yeah. That'll do, pig. Oh, I, can't. <laughs> I can see him talking already. They're running out of space. This could be the next one. After this one, it's going to go there. I think he's copying. Yeah. Uh, Is it, you're not going to fit in there, guys. You know it's not going to fit. It's a tight I've fit. I've got to try. It's not gonna, <laughs> not <gonna happen. laughs> It's all over. It's a fair cop, hey. Governor. Thanks for the round. The trick here is to start with one coin right in the middle of the napkin, no matter who is chosen to go first. Do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? Where do you want? You can go first. Okay. If his opponent goes first, Alex claims there has to be one coin in the middle before the first move. After that, it's just down to symmetry. Alex simply mirrors every move his opponent makes by placing his next coin on the opposite side of the napkin. And because the opponent goes first, he'll also be the first to run out of space and lose. Can I use this to pay for it? No, you can't. <laughs> That's my money. Go away. <laughs> Still to come, the hustlers go clubbing and DJ Toby Anstis is out of the frying pan and into the fire. Oh, fantastic. Paul's put on his best gear for a day out in central London. He's here to demonstrate a scam that catches out on wary tourists and travellers in major cities around the world. And he's going to do it using nothing more than his sharp suit, a clipboard and a fake staff badge in the Black Cab Con. Good things come to those who wait. Looking for a taxi, folks? OK, where are you going? Marble Arch. Marble Arch, you want the hotel rate? Save you a few pounds. Yeah, it's going to be. It's about 15 of you go, 10 of you get the uh, thing here. Paul apparently worked for this hotel which seems to have a discount arrangement with the local taxis. Here, that's £10. If you pay me. <laughs> that would be too easy, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Some people are so cynical. There you go. Make sure you show them that when you get to the other side. That includes his tip, unless he's extra good, in which case... So the flat rate for hotel guests is £10, rather than the more expensive standard rate on the taxi meter. They've paid Paul in advance and just need to give the cab driver the prepaid slip when they reach their destination. All right, we got two for Marble Arch. Yeah? Uh, yeah, when you get there. OK? Yeah, thank you. All right. All done? You certainly have been. Of course, there is no arrangement with the black cab. Paul's just made himself £10 in a couple of minutes. And with that rate of return, it's worth sticking around to see if more tourists want to be taken for a ride. You looking for a taxi? Yeah. Oh, yeah so Where are you going? Uh, I think it's called the Moyston Hotel. You came out of this one? Yeah, yeah. OK. Do you want to get the taxi, right? Yeah, I'll £10 get... anywhere in London. Do you, right. to me? Do you need to yeah. show this to the taxi driver? No worries. OK, and he'll give you another receipt at the other end. All right? Oh, my God. There you go. Uh, that's for you. Same routine, same result. £10 to Paul. Make sure you show them that receipt when you get to the other end. Yeah, well, okay, yeah. All right, we're going to the Morstan Hotel, uh, 4 Branston Street. Got it? OK. Stuff. you go, Thank you very much for that. All right. Well, uh, cheers, mate. Take care. He could stand here all day collecting tenors. But Paul decides to move his operation to another street before any of the marks make a return journey. Meanwhile, the first set of marks have just reached their destination. I'm supposed to give you that ticket, he said. You're joking, I've paid £10 for the hotel. Surprise, surprise. The driver has never heard of any prepaid discount scheme. He just wants his fare. Once they'd paid for their journey all over again, we caught up with the marks to see how they were enjoying their day out. 
the guy in the suit just stood outside and said, oh, do you, do you want a taxi? And I said, yeah, and he said, if you pay me £10, I'll give you a receipt and um, you don't have to pay him. And I went, but you could just be a man in a suit. And he went, well, not that easy. So we got in the taxi, came here, and the bloke went, no, I don't think so. Look, you've got to pay again. If we want a taxi at home, we know who to use, who's the cheapest and what's Who's, best. Yeah. But when you come down here and... And you are like a tourist, yeah. then you don't know. You're completely out of your comfort zone, and that's when you can easily get duped. Yeah. In this scam, Paul's very smartly dressed and stood right outside the hotel entrance. So because he looks the part, tourists naturally assume he works for the hotel and trust him. This is a classic, it's too good to be true scam. If you're getting a cab from a hotel, always check that it really has been provided. When you get into the cab, ask the cab driver if he's been paid. If he hasn't, you get out very quickly and you're not going to lose anything, but double check. How are you? Nice to see you. Money won is twice as sweet as money earned. So I'll say goodbye now. And money won from a celebrity is even sweeter. I am on the verge of crying. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Let's see if you can do it. Oh. Give it to me. In the Celebrity Kong Games. Hey. This week, the hustlers are going to challenge heart DJ and former I'm a Celebrity star, Toby Anstis. Now, have you ever been uh, scammed or hustled? No. Never? I don't think I've ever been hustled, no, never oh, scammed. You know, not that you know of, obviously. No, no, this, this is probably a first, yeah. You're like virgin territory for a scammer, then. Break yeah. me in gently, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I think we do. Oh. We'll leave you two alone. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, we, we do have a challenge for you, and it's kind of like a bar bet, except you wouldn't really do it at the bar, more like a kitchen. Two beautiful non There you go, pounds. from the real hustle uh, kitchen collection. <laughs> <laughs> £10 is required, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, do you have ten pounds? Yeah. I have the dosh. Oh, oh, fantastic. The dosh goes to the keeper, and the keeper is always dressed. Thank you. Yep, well, you know, we'll see. So here's the challenge. All you have to do, you have to place one frying pan onto the other, and you have to do it in such a way that by holding onto just one of the handles, you can turn it around like this, and the other won't fall out. OK? Right. That sounds almost impossible, but Toby's going to give it a go. Right. <clears throat> right, is this doable? It is doable. Oh, yeah, totally. The thing is, you just think, I bet everybody's already seen it at home, and you're like, what a wally. I can't believe, <laughs> I can't believe Toby's not seen that. He's so thick. <laughs> He's so thick. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'll bet they haven't seen that. If I toss it, if you... Toby throws some ideas at the problem to see what will stick. Or in this case, non-stick. Can I go from hand to hand, quick? No, you've got to hold it on just one hand. One hand or one hand. hand. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just there. You know it's going to yeah, go. Yeah, we Stop I. pondering like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's going to fall out. I just want to hear the big clap. Oh, yeah, that might work. Oh, no, it didn't. Oh, no, it didn't. Oh, no. What a surprise. <laughs> there you go. If there's a way of doing this, Toby's determined to find it. What about if? Oh. Hmm. <laughs> See, that looks more <laughs> He's not having much luck so far. I'm moving away Yeah, now. do yeah. <laughs> Well, that's interesting, but it didn't stay. It did detach at one what? point. What? Close, but that's cheating. So why doesn't that count? Because why you have I to turn them over back? so that it stays inside. For a split second, Oh, but that was, like, separated. literally... Yeah. <clears throat> oh, I don't think I'm going to get it. Toby, Shall do you I? give up? I'm really frustrated, yeah. you know. But I don't think I'm going to get it. Toby can't stand the heat, so he's going to have to get out of the kitchen. Time now for Paul to demonstrate how it's done. Nothing involved but two frying pans. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And he's not bending the rules. What? What? He's bending the frying pans instead. Yes, I'll, I'll hold yeah, yeah. This one. No this way. What? Would you like hell? to put that one in there? Let's uh, give that a little start. Put <laughs> <laughs> that in there. <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, you know, we do recommend you try this at home with your own hands. Yeah. Uh, this is why it's called the Real Hustle Range. Uh, <laughs> that is... <laughs> that is off our Yeah, well Come done, bud. Well done. You see, of you. course, I never thought to ask at the start, do you mind if I break the bloody thing? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
What Toby didn't know was that these are some of the cheapest frying pans money can buy. Using a touch of brute strength, Paul simply rolled both pans up, allowing him to wrap one inside the other. He was then able to turn both pans over, holding just one handle. Winning himself a celebrity tenor in the process. We'll leave you with the frying oh, pans. Oh, brilliant. How am I going to fry um, me eggs in that? Eh? <laughs> it's 8.30 p.m. in Clubland. Dance music fans travel here from around the country to be part of the capital's hippest party scene, looking to let their hair down and spend some cash. Not wanting to miss out, the hustlers are hosting their own night, offering cheap drinks, top DJs and lots of celebrities. This is the Club Night Con. <laughs> Judging by the noise coming from inside, the party is already in full swing. The doors will be opening shortly to give the public their chance to mingle with the stars already inside. Keeping order out front is Paul as the bouncer. Just be a couple of minutes, everybody, yeah? And here comes the man in charge of the guest list, Alex, as the flamboyant host. Hi, oh, sorry, it's going to be just 10 minutes or something, yeah? Just so we're a bit full at the moment. 10 minutes. The hustlers decide to show the queue a little flash of the glamour inside. Is that one of ours? Here's the convincer. Where have you been? <laughs> Everyone... The other clubbers may not be 100% sure who this particular celebrity is, but it looks an awful lot like Jess. Thank you. <laughs> now Jess is inside, Alex has an idea to get everyone else in as quickly as possible. If I get their payment now and stamp them, then you can let everybody in who's been stamped. All right. Thanks. It's handsome today. Hi, right, guys. We're trying to get you in in about 10 minutes, OK? I'll start from this end. I'm going to give you all a stamp. And I'll take your money now, so you don't have to do it in size. You don't have to wait. Uh, it's 20 each. That's my yeah. There you go. Thank you. Pay separately, OK. That's you. Do you like it? When I saw it, I said, I have to have that. Hi, guys. Sorry to keep you waiting. You Alex go? works the queue like a pro. 20 each. Thank you. There we go. Let me in, let me in, let me in. And then heads back inside, having collected hundreds of pounds in cash. But why are the customers so eager to hand over their money? And how did they hear about the club in the first place? To find out, we need to rewind. The club night had plenty of publicity. Because the hustlers had put up posters all around the area and distributed flyers. The offer of cutting edge DJs, celeb guests and half price drinks made their club night too good to miss. Copy that. OK. Okay, so to make sure they're clear, then I'm gonna. Is Paul finally about to let the crowd into the party? <laughs> There's still no sign of Alex, Paul, or the great night out everyone's been waiting for so patiently. And then the music stops. Eventually, somebody plucks up the courage to cross the velvet rope. Anyone in? Yeah, go on. Is anyone in? <laughs> what can you say? Yo! Hello! <laughs> Come on, let's just go in and say.
There are no celebrities at this party and no DJ. In fact, this is no nightclub at all. <laughs> These clubbers have just paid £20 a head for an empty room with a cheap stereo and some toy disco lights. Here's what the marks didn't see. Three hours earlier, Paul and Alex laid out some cheap red carpet and threw up a rope barrier to make the outside of the club look the part. Thank you. Then later, once Alex had collected the door money, he headed inside to join Jess. Okay, guys, so to make sure they're clear, then I'm going to... Followed shortly afterwards by Paul. All three hustlers went straight through the empty building, out a back exit, and into their getaway car, along with hundreds of pounds of other people's money. Loads of celebrities and that were coming in and stuff. And then there's a dude with a funny hat, and then 10 minutes later, music's off. Everybody's gone inside, and there's nothing. I've lost blooming 80 quid. The music just cut and Bounce some strange, yeah, we just walk in there and it's it's just an empty room. Do you know what it was? It was because the guy was really friendly. Really like, kind really of friendly camp. and camp. So you think, oh, he's fine, oh, he's got nail varnish. He's a, he's a <laughs> cow, colourful the character. The glitter as well. The glitter good. on the eyes, yeah, we thought we'd just give him 20 quid. Where we see a celebrity turn up as well in the limousine, so we thought, yes, this is the place we want to be. I feel really, Terrible. really angry. I feel <laughs> devastated. <laughs> This scam is all about setting the scene and giving the marks what they expect to see. And a glamorous guest arriving is a perfect convincer. This type of scam happens all over the world and in many different ways. Don't be fooled by publicity or a really flashy front. And certainly don't join a queue just because it looks like it's going to be a good time. This is The Real Hustle on Holiday. In this series, Alex, Jess and Paul expose to our hidden cameras the scams that cheat tourists and travellers out of their hard-earned holiday money. On tonight's show, Paul gets the Spanish Inquisition. You got it? Can you see your pockets? Athlete Ewan Thomas bottles it. Okay. He's like Spider-Man hands. And these ladies find out what the hotel safe is for. We've been done. We've been done. All the people on this show have been hustled for real. And after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. This is the Plaza del Obispo in Malaga, destination for thousands of tourists who come to marvel at the impressive cathedral. Amongst all the tourists today is Paul. He's going to demonstrate one of the classic scams to catch out holidaymakers around the world. He is the helpful stranger. Paul seems to have time on his hands and spots an opportunity to do his good deed of the day for some holidaymakers. You guys want a picture with all of you? It's up to you. That's what you get for being helpful. Maybe some other tourists would appreciate his kind offer. Do you want a picture? You want a picture together? You want together? Yeah, you don't mind. Yeah, that's all right. Cheers. Nothing better to do. These two guys are keen to have a souvenir photo. That's good. Why don't you get one with the uh, thing in the background? With the door, yeah, Santa Jessica. Paul's really taking pride in his photographs. Everyone ignores that and looks at this thing. 
Oh, why don't you stand just about there? About there is fine. It's great. Sorry. Paul's not happy with the lighting conditions. It's not picking up any light here at all. And then, daylight robbery. She's got your camera. She's got your camera. Yeah, sorry, man. I just turned around. She grabbed it. The whole thing happened too fast for the marks to see. And Paul has suddenly become the prime suspect. I know. She's got it. I mean, check me, Paul. I don't have my pocket. I got that. He needs to use all his skills as a con man to talk his way out of the sticky situation. Sure, of course you can. I don't mind. They realize Paul really doesn't have their camera. Yeah. Did you see her take it? I got that. A local points out two policemen further down the road, and one of the marks heads off to report the theft. I think you should go with him, mate. Yeah, just tell him what happened. I'll wait here. Paul suddenly remembers he needs to be elsewhere. So if he hasn't got the camera, who grabbed it? While Paul was waiting for a mark in the plaza, there were Alex and Jess waiting just around the corner with their scooter engine running. You want to go? Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah, that's all right. Cheers. Got nothing better to do. For the scam to work, Paul had to manoeuvre the marks across the square. You want to get one over here? Everyone ignores that and looks at this thing. So that he could stand in a pre-arranged spot next to the road. Paul, pretending to have trouble with the camera, Sorry. was Alex's cue to hit the gas. And that meant Paul could turn towards the road and hold out the camera at the crucial moment. She's got your camera. Jess just had to stick out her hand and grab it. It took all three hustlers working together in perfect sync to pull off the choreographed snatch. We were standing there having a photo done by that um, cathedral. Jason took one of me, then Jason said, you take one of me. And then some crazy man over there said he'd take a photo of his boat. I don't know why we gave him the camera. I didn't, you did. <laughs> I know, I was that, yeah, I know. And then he asked us to go in front of that building there. And then the next minute he said, the camera's gone. A, a bike, and all I see was this bike come past, but it happened too far. I seen him put the land out, and it just straight out of his hand. You know, there's a crowd of people, and you say, oh, do you want me to take a photo of you? That's what you've done. And he just, the fat camera just disappeared. We've all been in situations where we've been on holiday and we've asked somebody to take a picture for us. We should be very wary if somebody approaches you. Always make sure you keep all your belongings really close to you so that nobody could grab them off you from the streets. And you should avoid carrying expensive items around with you at all costs. Instead, leave them in a hotel safe. Or best of all, don't take them on holiday at all. How are you? Nice to see you. Money won is twice as sweet as money earned. You might as well say goodbye now. And money won from a celebrity oh. is even sweeter. I am on the verge of crying. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Let's see if you can do it. Oh. In the Celebrity Kong Games. This week, the hustlers are hoping to trip up a 400-metre runner, Olympic and Commonwealth Games athlete, Ewan Thomas. So, How are you? I'm all right, thank you very much. Yeah? A little bit nervous, obviously anticipating this, but apart from that, life's quite good. Not too bad, yeah? Right. You, you're still training and you keep very I, fit? I keep fit, yeah. yeah. I mean, my own athletics training, I sort of retired three years ago, but right. I still try and keep a bit buff, you know? Mm -hmm. So That will come yeah. in handy, actually. I will it. It will, yeah, because is it a there's a little challenge. bit of... There's a physical aspect. There's also a mental aspect as well. You, right. Why aren't you saying you used to be a BMX rider as well? I was, yeah, from yeah. the age of nine years old. Have you still got the grip? Because the grip's really important, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, my grip's quite good. Yeah, and I ride good a motorbike as well, so I've got quite strong. Perfect. You know, these are all glasses, but if we had some bottles... We're going to... We're going to use these. All right, OK. Two for Mr okay. Paul. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of money involved. OK. How does a tenor sound? Just so happens a tenor's good, because I've got all a crisp right. new one here. Ewan's right. got the bottle to accept the wager and puts his money where his mouth is. You're not going to get it back. But well, maybe if I win the bet, I will. Hey, yeah. maybe. Right. Maybe. If... I'm quite competitive, so I keep buying yeah. it. I'm mega competitive. I know. OK. All right. So here's the idea. Yeah. It's very simple. With one hand, without yeah. using the table, without supporting the bottles in any way, you have to start with the mouth to mouth, just the bottles, not you and yeah. I. Yeah. And uh, you hold them like that. 
and then you have to end with them held in the same hand, base to base. Okay. All right. And I can't, One I can't sort of lean them on myself or nothing like that. You want to give so, it a shot? Yeah, of course. Okay. So you start like this. Okay. Mouth oh, to mouth. I have to move away. <laughs> okay. I'm struggling just to hold it like that. Right. Okay. Thinking out loud, I, the only way I can imagine doing this, and I don't think I could, would be to drop this one, gently play, gently drop it, yeah. but then I need it to drop very straight, which it won't, because it will be spinning. My initial thing is literally to drop it and then catch, using that, that bottle, catch the top of that one. You can do that, you probably should join the circle. Uh, exactly. How would you do it? How would you think? I can't roll, I can't, I can't let go, basically, no, as well. Well, you could let go if you want to, to some degree, but you're only allowed to use one hand. You can't lay anything on the table. Yeah, you can move the bottles around the with that hand, mm. but you can't use the table or your body. There you go. Oh, okay. There oh, we go. Yeah. And he's off. I need like Spider-Man hands. What do you say that? Ah, <laughs> uh, what if you? Mm. I really want to try harder, but it will drop. It will Look, drop. Do you want us, let's get something try. safe. Yeah. Will a safety net make it any easier? You need to feel as if you've had a proper cracker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right. And if you break a bottle, don't worry about it. Right, so... Ooh, Ooh okay. okay. I need to flip that one and catch it. Oh, well. Oh. <laughs> Looks like he could be on the home straight. I'm starting to get a little worried. He's actually almost done it. Could this be the first £10 loss for the hustlers? Close one. It was a valiant effort from Ewan, but in the end, the bottle and his chance to beat the hustlers slipped through his fingers. But to win the tenor, Paul still needs to prove that it can actually be done. And the thing is, you were pretty close. Right? Here you go, there's one. Two. Three. Just bring it down. There it is, just to there. Great. Fair play, look at that. It's all down to the technique. Try Paul go. gives Ewan the step-by-step -step guide. Tilt this one down like that. Yep. Throw it up and catch it as close to the base as possible. Okay. And then move it up so you're holding it between finger and thumb. Yeah? Yeah. And what you do is you kind of relax these fingers and just let it fall down to there, but keep a hold of it. Perfect. Now you come up to there, keep it in position, and then using your fingers, just give it a little slide to run down. So it goes Where's down it? To it there. can't go anywhere. My hand's in the way. There it is. Just to there. Um, I'm giving up. I'll, I'll just watch you do it. All right. I, I, admit, you, I admit defeat. It's easy when you know how. A bit of practice, and Ewan will be hustling his own mates with this con. So, that's another celebrity tenor for the Hustlers' bulging coffers. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, let's take to the bank. All right. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers, guys. It wasn't a bad effort, though, was it? Cheers, Paul. Cheers. Still to come, Paul becomes an uninvited hotel guest. Find out what floats Jess's cork. <laughs> and watch the Hustlers put the left into left luggage. Make sure you back stop it all in there. If you're going on holiday this year and don't want to run into any hustlers, here are some helpful tips to get you on your way. When people go abroad, they're going to need to get around, and for some, that means using taxis. Now, if you're going to use a taxi, make sure it's a fully licensed one. You can ask your hotel to recommend one, you can ask the people you're staying with, ask fellow travellers what taxis they've been using, and use the same ones. Remember that in some countries, taxis don't use meters. There's pre-arranged fares for every trip. Now, you need to make sure you know exactly what the fare is going to be before you set off. 
Now, there is a scam that happens all around the world in taxis. Let's say you've arrived at your destination, the taxi driver asks for 19 euros for the fare. You hand over a 20. In that instant, as he takes it over his shoulder, he will switch it for a lower denomination note, let's say, in this case, a 10. And he will say, well, it's, the fare is 19. Now, either you insist that you've given him a 20, in which case the taxi driver very cleverly replies, yes, but this is all I've got. I haven't got any change. In which case, you just let him off the one euro and he gets a one euro tip. Or you apologise for your mistake and you hand him over another 10, in which case the taxi driver makes a nice little tidy profit. So the lesson for this is whenever you're in a foreign country, whether you're buying stuff or paying for services, always make sure you know exactly how much money you're handing over. That way, no one's going to try and pull a fast one. Alex, Paul and Jess are on their way to a busy four-star hotel, temporary home to thousands of commuters and tourists. They're here to demonstrate how determined con artists can separate unwary travellers from their possessions even when they think they're locked away safe and sound. This is the Hotel Room Ripoff. Paul heads up to the guest floors and lets himself straight into one of the rooms, as if he was a hotel guest, which, of course, he isn't. He takes a moment to install some hidden cameras and then gets to work, ransacking the room. It doesn't take Paul long to track down everything worth stealing. An expensive laptop, a mobile phone, two handbags, and a wallet with cash and credit cards. Having taken over 1,000 pounds worth of items, Paul heads straight back to the hotel lobby where he rejoins Alex. What do you think? Probably. What do you think? Hmm. I thought we'd have some fun, huh? Yeah. The boys head off to celebrate their haul with a bottle of expensive bubbly. Madame, how are you? And that looks like Jess, waiting for them in a cab. Mate, oh, thank you. Well, that's a good one. So, what was going on? How did Paul walk straight into a stranger's hotel room and straight out with all their stuff? Let's take another look at the hustlers arriving at the hotel. Jess and Paul headed for the lobby, leaving Alex to carry out the first part of the scam with a little help from a sharp suit and a hotel manager badge. He waited near the front exit for some guests to leave the hotel. Oh, hi there. Excuse me, are you hotel guests? Uh, yeah. Has anyone informed you about the security reset we're doing today? No. Uh, uh, basically, we are resetting all the keys on all the floors. Oh, right. So we just need to program, reprogram. Are you our hotel oh, guests okay. as well? This particular hotel guest is actually Jess. If you, if you hand me your key, I'll make sure that it gets reset, because otherwise we're going to do a security reset in about half an hour. And then we get them back again. Yeah, of course, you get them back from reception. Uh, your uh, room number is? Uh, 206. 206. And your Jess played a crucial role, handing over an old key from another hotel as a convincer. This left the marks with no reason to question Alex's authority. So they gave him their key card and room number two. 502, I'll just hand that back. And uh, your keys will be ready in about half an hour. Half an hour, Okay. Fine. All right, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. It was as simple as that. In less than a minute, Alex had the marked room number and, crucially, their key. And having just left, they'd be gone long enough for Paul to empty the room. 502, 20 minutes. Take me five. And what about the pricey champagne that Alex left the hotel with? That was also courtesy of the Marks. Well, can we have the uh, Pierre Jouet, the 99? I'll take it unopened and I'll sign it to my room if I can. Thank you very much. Alex just picked the most expensive vintage on the wine list. Yeah, it's uh, 502. 502? Yes. And charged it to the Marks' room bill. The hotel guests return and head to the front desk to pick up their reprogrammed key. The receptionist is a little confused, but issues a new one, 
After all, they're genuine hotel guests. They're about to discover a nasty surprise waiting behind the locked door. At least the key works. Oh, it works. Now it works. Let's see if you're like... Have they turned it up the room already? Um... Don't mess about. Don't mess about. Oh, damn. Oh, for God's sake. Don't mess about. Oh, Anita! Shh. Where is my laptop? And where is my phone? Oh, my oh God. Can you to charge? Where is my laptop? And my phone? <sighs> call the manager. How do you call the manager? I don't know. We've been done. Come on, we're going down to reception. But the hotel manager won't be able to bring back their valuables. They're in the hustler's possession, who by now a long gone. We've only left that stuff in a hotel room that you would expect that's secure. I mean, it's not like high-value jewellery or anything where you need to have it in a security box or anything. It's just the usual it's stuff. your credit cards. I My whole bag's gone. Everything's gone. So it's not just the laptop, but it's not just... You I can see your credit, credit cards and all your money. Where's my gone? Don't cry. He asked, he said um, there's a problem with the cards and to give him the cards and come back in half an hour and they would have sorted it all out. He looked like he worked for the hotel and the hotel doesn't know nothing about this. We've been done. We've been done. With the right suit and a generic badge, it's surprising just how many people will assume that Alex works for the hotel. But that's what makes this type of scam work. Also, the situation we create with Jess helps to get them to comply. Most people will follow along if someone else agrees, rather than stand up for themselves and say no. Whatever you do, don't leave valuable items in your hotel room in the first place. Always put them in a safe, or best of all, don't take them on holiday with you at all. Most good hotels put a lot of effort into keeping their guests secure. You've got to play your part. You've got to make sure that if you part with your hotel key card or you give somebody your room number, that you're dealing with a bona fide member of hotel staff. So if you are approached in unusual circumstances for your key card, don't give it up. Go back to reception, ask that person to come with you. If they won't come, there's a fair chance they're a con man. When on holiday, it doesn't get much better than relaxing in the sun with a drink in your hand. Except if that drink is free. The hostlers are going to show you how to win drinks from your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hostlers always have the edge. And you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. I will have a gin and tonic, please. Jess is out for a drink in a seaside bar, but she doesn't plan on picking up the tab. Did you study physics at school? You didn't, so you're no good at physics. No. I'm still going to pick you anyway for this. <laughs> OK, because this is actually about physics. I've got a challenge for you. OK, I've got a glass of water. I've got a cork. I want you to place the cork in the water and make it settle in the centre without touching the edges of the glass. So it has to stay in the centre without going towards side of the glass. You think you can do it? Sounds simple enough? Uh, that's a challenge. I'll have a go. OK. If you can do it, then I'll buy you a drink. And if you can't do it, and I can, can you buy me a drink? No. Shake? Yeah? Think it's fair? No helping if you know Hands it, up. Okay? OK? Hands off the table, boys. Can I help? Sure. No, you can't help. And you can't help. Okay. Between you and me. Something to do with the glasses position. Whatever you think. <laughs> Whoa, baby, come on. Stay, stay. Oh, it's gone to the edge. You lose. OK, so if I can do it, then you buy me a drink, OK? Fair enough. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going 
do. I didn't say you couldn't use anything. I'm just going to top it up a little bit. Uh, I see what's happening. I'm just going to top it up a little bit, you know. Yeah, a little bit. How much is a little bit? Come on. Just a little bit. Pop it up a little bit. No problem. I'm concentrating here, boys. Yeah. These guys have just been hustled by simple science. A floating cork always moves to the highest point of the water. When the glass is half full, the highest point is right at the edge because the water surface is slightly curved. But when the glass is full, the water surface actually bulges outwards, meaning the highest point is right in the center. And that's where the cork will float. It works in all drinks, especially free ones. Can you drink? There you go. You can use that now, can't you? You can do it with all your mates. Jess is in a busy shopping centre promoting a new left luggage facility. And for a limited time only, these lockers are completely free. This is the lockup. With so many people weighed down by bags, it's not long before Jess finds someone to make use of this great offer. Yeah, so you've got quite a few bags with you today. Would you like to use one of our free lockers? Um... You can have one each. Yeah, you're welcome. Put your stuff in there. I don't know if you can shove it all in one or... I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you two lockers. There's yours. Thank you. One for you. There you go. Just make sure you're back before nine. And the other lockers also start filling up. That's a bag of shopping and a backpack. I'll put all in there. Thank you very much. Do you want to That's another bag locked up perfectly safe and secure. Not in any danger at all of being stolen by unscrupulous hustlers. Two hours later, the customers start coming back. But instead of finding Jess, they're faced with a big empty space where the lockers and their bags used to be. They head into a nearby shop to ask if they've seen 40 metal lockers vanishing into thin air. And they're not the only ones wondering where all their belongings have gone. Let's take a look at what they didn't see. Just here. Just here. This was the mall earlier in the day. Why don't you go just there? You think so? Uh -huh. That'd be nice, yeah. Come on, someone might steal them. In a matter of minutes, this empty corner of the shopping centre was transformed into the Hustler's left luggage facility. All right, cup of tea. Bye-bye. <laughs> Once Jess had collected as many bags, rucksacks and carriers as she could... Do you want, do you want two of them? It was time to call back the hired muscle. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, heavy. And as quickly as the seemingly permanent lockers appeared, they were gone. And along with all those bags, went into the back of the hustler's van, never to be seen again. There was a lady down there that was uh, having some lockers there for anybody to put their bags inside. And basically my friend put her bag in there and I was saying, no, I ain't putting my bag in there because I actually come here often. So I've never seen such a thing, so I thought, no way. I think my passport's in there as well, so I really need my bag. Jeez. I just can't believe it. I really can't. Hustlers are always looking for ways to separate you from your belongings. And there's nothing they like better than finding a way to get you to give them your stuff. Anytime you have to leave your luggage in lockers, make sure you're using reputable facilities, like at a train station and an airport. Of course, if you want to be sure about the safety of your belongings, the best way is to keep them with you at all times. Whenever you're invited to part with your valuables, whether it's locking them away or depositing them somewhere, if there is something unfamiliar about what you're being asked to do, don't be afraid to double check. You know, if it means going to a shopping centre and saying, are these cabinets new, are they OK, then do so. Don't be embarrassed about it. It's your money, your goods, your valuables that you're parting with. So just be safe about it.
This is The Real Hustle on Holiday. In this series, Alex, Jess and Paul expose to our hidden cameras the scams that cheat tourists and travellers out of their hard-earned holiday money. On tonight's show, Jess makes a fortune using flower power. That's a one pound, please. TV star Michael Underwood gets his big break. OK, OK, this one's for the money. And it's curtains for these girls on their big night out. I'm gutted. I'm off. All the people on this show have been hustled for real. And after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. It's midday at the municipal coach station in Malaga on Spain's Costa del Sol. At this time of day, it's bustling with hundreds of travelers hurrying to make a connection or arriving in the city and all with one thing in common. They've got with them bags or suitcases stuffed with valuables. Alex is carrying a bag too, but he's not about to take a coach trip. He's here to demonstrate a con which is frequently used to relieve unsuspecting tourists of their property. This is the bus station steal. First things first. Alex stashes his bag away safely in a left luggage locker. And then he waits. He hears some English-speaking voices coming his way. This could be his opportunity to get the scam on the road. Oh, yeah. Here's this one. I'll tell you what, good luck with getting the key out. Oh, it's just so stuck. I'll show you. It took me, I almost missed my bus earlier. Serious? I just had to bang at everything. I was here banging. I was here banging away, trying to get it to work. Just put, uh, put your token in here. In here? In there. What a gent. He helps them out with the dodgy locker door. Other way around. Put it here. But then it closed and I couldn't. I couldn't get the. There we go. It just took, it took forever to get it out. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, Cheers. They all go their separate ways. The Mark's happy in the knowledge that their possessions are locked away safe and secure. Later that day, the Marks return to pick up their bags. But there's already a key in the locker, and there are definitely no bags inside. It doesn't take the Marks long to work out that they've been the victims of a simple but ruthless con trick. So what did happen to the bags? Let's take another look. When Alex arrived at the left luggage area, his first stop was actually a different empty locker. He inserted a coin, but didn't place his bag inside. In fact, all he wanted was the key. Oh, hiya. Here's this one. Let's put it in here. The story about the dodgy lock was just an excuse to operate the locker himself allowing him to pull out the key and secretly switch it for the identical-looking one already in his hand. There we go. In one movement, he dropped the Mark's key up his right sleeve and then gave them the one to the empty locker, which had been hidden in his hand all along. 
they didn't suspect a thing. Mission accomplished. Once the coast was clear, Alex put that locker key to good use. The marks had actually left behind an umbrella and could have returned at any moment. So Alex needed to move fast without arousing suspicion. It was as simple as that. Seemed like a good time to hop on a bus. We've just had a laptop stolen and Emma's handbag, so as we were coming to the locker, he was, oh, well, help me because the key's quite sticky, so we put our stuff in. He gives the key back, so whether he switched it or whether, whether he's had a copy of it, it was English and very helpful. Didn't look rough at all or, you know, so then again, you never know. When traveling, it's normal to find yourself in unfamiliar circumstances, and a little bit of help is sometimes appreciated. Unfortunately, sometimes people are trying to help themselves instead of helping you. How are you? Nice to see you. Money won is twice as sweet as money earned. So I say goodbye now. And money won from a celebrity is even sweeter. I am on the verge of crying. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Let's see if you can do it. Oh. In the Celebrity Kong Games. This week, the hustlers have come to this pool bar to pit their wits against television presenter and former star of Celebrity Dancing on Ice, Michael Underwood. You know that, that you skate? Yes. Um, how are you at pool? Better than I am at skating. Really? Oh, I haven't broken anything oh, playing pool. OK, yeah. so, so this should be quite easy for you, then? I hope so. OK, well, Ooh, obviously, uh, we've got a challenge for you. Yeah. Um, have you got a tenner on you? Uh, yes, I've got some money Excellent. here. Excellent. Hang on a sec. There you go, look. Oh, lovely. Ten oh, yeah. pounds. Do you mind giving it to you? Okay, okay, there you go. Come on. Yeah. Alex starts setting up the challenge. Okay. <laughs> well, as you can see, um, there's a, a golf tee yeah. in the middle. And a choose your weapon. Um, They're both ooh. the same. Are they, though? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> 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 okay. them. You can choose. I'm going to go with this one. Okay. 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 Yeah. So, by default, this one is mine. Thank you very much. Time for Jess to explain the rules. We're going to place the um, golf tee in between three pool balls, mm -hmm. okay? Now I want you to take the cue ball, place it wherever you want on the table. Yeah. And your challenge is to knock over the golf tee. On the strike though, so you can't knock the balls, I can't start rebounding and knock them over afterwards. It has to be on the strike. First you need to right. knock over the golf tee. So, all Michael's got to do to win is shoot the cue ball into the three <laughs> balls surrounding the golf tee and make the tee fall over. Sounds like a piece of cake. Have the hustlers made this too easy? We're about to find out. I like it. You're inspecting it. Yeah, absolutely. That's good. Michael suspects that there may be more to this than meets the eye. And oh, can pick this table up with one Do you all need to be like, are you touching the table for a reason? Is no, that, no, we won't touch the table. All right, let's give this a go. Okay. And this is practice, there's no money on Just practice, no money yet. Okay. Here comes practice shot number one. OK, that's, that's an interesting approach. Okay. No joy. Maybe raw power is what's needed. So I'll try something a bit harder. Okay. Okay. I'd step back. Oh, yeah. yeah. He gets ready to unleash okay. hell. Okay. Still no joy. OK, so it's not power that's the problem. Next, he tries the softly, softly approach. If I do it gently, if I do it gently, maybe that's the thing. No, OK, so... The tea is still standing. Oh, I thought that was a good yeah. approach. Shall I have a shot? You want you have a go? Yeah, go on. Show you you, that it, you... Over to Jess to prove that it is actually possible. My technique isn't very... Yeah, listen, it is a bit rustic. I don't flutter those eyelids. <laughs> I won't be fooled. Right. It's actually in the strike. That's... No way. Seriously, it is. You'll see. Okay. She makes it look easy. It's the slight strike. Now, yeah. if you can match that, because I think it's about time you put your money with your mouth is. Come on. Money? Money? Mouth. OK, OK, this one's for the money. Come All on. right. For the money. For the money. Come on. <clears throat> what did I do last time? I did what is I was that how you want to place the people? Yeah. 
Is that how you okay. played it before? Now you're sidetracking me with the, the like that matters. Right, it, that you don't matter. think it matters? It doesn't matter, does it? Take the shots. This is the one that counts. Oh! Not a wobble, but that's the tennis. Thank you very much. He can't make the tea topple. So, what's the secret? It's all in the setting up. The tea will never fall over if it's right in the middle and not touching the balls. This is because the balls just knock each other out of the way, leaving it standing. But when Alex set it up for Jess, he moved the tea forward a tiny fraction so that it was actually touching one ball. And that way, it's a pushover. So, the hustlers' winning streak continues and they take home another celebrity tenor. You could have set it up so that I did do it on a practice, yeah. couldn't you? And then screwed me on the... We did that, you just didn't hit it hard enough for it to fall over. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, so you set it up for me to knock it over, I still didn't knock it over. It. What chance did I have? Yeah, no. Still to come, Paul's got bottle. The most expensive one in the house. Is that enough? That's plenty. Excuse me. And these girls find out there's no such thing as a free upgrade. She was very convincing. If you're planning a holiday this year and don't want to run into any hustlers, here's some essential advice to get you on your way. We all like to pick up a souvenir or two when we're abroad. Now, here's a few tips just to make sure you don't pay more than you bargain for. Firstly, Never ever buy anything from anybody who approaches you in the street, no matter how good the deal sounds. Just don't do it. Stick to established shops or recognized street markets. Also, when you've paid for your goods, don't let them out of your sight. If they offer to wrap them for you, just remain in the shop and keep an eye on them. It is a classic scam when people exchange expensive goods for inexpensive tat and they wrap it up for you and you only find out when you get home. Also, try and familiarise yourself with the total value of goods you're allowed to bring back from the country you're visiting. Sometimes that value is very low, and that great bargain that you thought you picked up on holiday might turn out to be quite expensive after you've finished paying all the import duty. A busy town square. Thousands of commuters and tourists pass through here every day. It's the perfect place to demonstrate a con that catches out unwary travellers all over the world. This is the unlucky Heather Hustle. Jess gets to work, armed with nothing more than some cheap flowers and a bit of a pushy attitude. That's a one pound, please. Okay. What looks like a free gift isn't so free after all. You might as well just take it, otherwise you'll have bad luck all day. Thank you, that's a pound, please. Have a little try, it looks it's really right. good I'm on you. Rush. Well, look, good luck. Have a nice day. You just stick it on there. In fact, the lucky Heather costs one pound, whether the passers-by want it or not. That's a lucky Heather. You just pop it into your shop like that. It's bad luck if you don't take it. That's a pound, please. Oh, thank you. You're very welcome. That's nice. Nice you have a nice day. Okay, so you're sweet. Bye. For the one pound. Are they? Yeah. yeah. It'll bring you good luck all day. This guy is one of the lucky ones, because Jess isn't standing on the street all day just to make a couple of quid. For the one pound. In fact, there's something far more sinister to this flower girl than meets the eye, as this guy is just finding out. Wait, I don't have my phone. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. It's in my pocket here, on the side. Most of the time, Jess really was just trying to give passers-by lucky Heather in return for some small change. But she was always keeping an eye out for the right marks to come along, like someone with an open coat pocket, in this case, containing a mobile phone. Do you want some as well? Yes. I don't want you too jealous. My okay. purse is gone, but your handbag was on your arm. Excuse me. Or an easily accessible bag with a purse inside. You out to bring your local Pinning on the flowers gave her an excuse to put her hands on the marks, and the flower board hid her right hand from sight while she pickpocketed her unsuspecting victims. Okay, bye. I had my, my, my iPod in here. Have a little 
tie. It looks it's really right. good on you. Oh, well, look, it looks great. And that looks like an MP3 player right there. Because she was doing that, that's where my mind was. She sniped my bed without me even realising. Wow. But there is nothing lucky about that ever. You may be lucky to get away with your, your purse on a good day, but otherwise there's nothing lucky. You'll find this particular scam all over the world, and it's designed to back you into a psychological corner. The idea is that if you accept the gift of the flower, you're beholding to them in some way, and they'll use this to badger you into giving as much money as they can get. But even if you refuse and walk away, you may find that your pocket has been picked in the process, and you could lose everything. Also remember, if somebody walks up to you and hands you something, you're under no obligation to give them money for it, no matter how much they pester you and even threaten you with curses. If you accept something, that is free. You don't have to pay for it. This is an example of a typical distraction that occurs in very busy areas, sometimes around tourist locations. If you're there, just be a bit cautious. Make sure that your purse is zipped away in your bag. Make sure your credit cards are tucked safely inside your jacket. Because while you're being distracted by the lady with the flower or the lucky Heather, there's a good chance that somebody's hand will be in your bag or in your pocket. When on holiday, it doesn't get much better than relaxing in the sun with a drink in your hand. Except if that drink is free. The hostlers are going to show you how to win drinks from your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hostlers always have the edge. And you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. I will have a gin and tonic, please. Paul has come to this Spanish seaside bar for some refreshments, but he's not planning to spend his own money. All right, here, here's, here's a little bet for you. That is a very, very expensive bottle of wine. You own a bar, you know that, don't you? At least two, three euros. At least. Yeah. <laughs> How much would you sell it for in a bar? Around 8.50. 8.50, 50 and I'm the hustler. <laughs> yeah, 8.50 for that. Well, I think you definitely deserve a glass. <laughs> Thank you very much. A little for you. I'll try one. Some for you. All right, now look at that. That's, uh, I want you to have every last drop. Yeah. Now, would you admit that's about the end of the bottle? Yes, definitely. Right. OK. So is that enough? That's plenty. How many drops do you think I can get out of that? Knowing you, probably at least 20. 20? 13. Nine, thirteen. What if I said a hundred? Hundred drops. I'm not, and I'm not going to pour anything in it. Anything oh, yeah, with this. I can't see where you're hiding that wine. <laughs> so I got to get a hundred more drops out of an empty wine bottle. In return for that, we get the really expensive bottle of wine that's back yeah, there. Lovely. Yeah, lovely. Which, incidentally, I would get the first glass. I don't know how that happens. <laughs> nice car, lost the first. You'll buy the wine. All right. Okay. Maybe I'll count the drop. <laughs> Could you do me a favour, guys? Could you hold that up for me? Like that. There you go. Okay. And uh, could you just step up just for a second? Just stand there. It's right there. Ready? One, two. Do that. <laughs> that's that's almost a hundred, but there's a few more. That's a few more. Let's get some over here. Yeah. Pop it again. <laughs> I think I'm going for 200. Okay. Well, maybe more. That's about 200, so that's two bottles of wine. Oh, if you don't mind. This bet seems so impossible, it can't fail to win a round of drinks. Even after Paul emptied out what seemed like the last drop of wine, there was still enough liquid left in the bottle to make more than 100 tiny drops on the paper. All it took was a few flicks of the wrist. That's definitely... Over 100, which incidentally, <laughs> incidentally, that bottle of wine is well over 100. So. <laughs> this is Leicester Square in London, destination for thousands of tourists who come to snap up bargains at the many cut price theatre ticket booths. West End Shores are the number one tourist attraction in the capital and more than 13 million tickets are sold in a year. 
so at up to £70 each, that's an awful lot of money. Jess and Paul also enjoy the odd evening of grease paint and showbiz tunes. But what they'd really like is to get their hands on some of that theatre-goer money. This is the We Will, We Will Rob You scam. Paul and Jess are in a Leicester Square bar, keeping an eye out for some likely looking marks. Such as these lucky ladies. Time to put this plan into action. Yeah. What time is it? Yeah. Half past. Half past, half past six. Half seven. Shall I go get one now? Hey. Good chance. I think so. Yeah. Go on then. OK. It's only around the corner, isn't it? All right. Can I um, take a jacket? No, I'm really hot. I don't want my jacket. We didn't have work. Sam's like Jess is heading off to buy some theatre tickets from one of the nearby discount ticket booths. Yeah, man, you didn't do it, wasn't it? Hello? Hey. Yeah, no, no. No, I'm in town. What's going on? Paul's none too subtle phone call is hard for the marks to ignore. Oh, make it. Could you call someone else? Maybe. It's his boss on the line. And Paul might not be able to make the show after all. Okay, I gotta deal with you know who first. All right, OK, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. But you know who has already bought the tickets. <laughs> cool. I'm freezing, I should have brought my coat. Um, um, I got We Will Rock You mm -hmm. at 7.30, so plenty of time. Do you want to go for dinner first? Yeah. No, no dinner. Here comes the bombshell. Stop it, what is it? What? <laughs> gotta go to work. You got to go to work? Yeah. What now? Well, in an hour. I can't make a show. I tried to call you, but. I've not got my phone. Unfortunately, these tickets are non refundable. I'll get the show next week. There is, yeah. All right. But then what am I going to do with these? Just give them to somebody else. I'm not going to give £68 tickets away. It would be such a terrible shame for these great seats to go to waste. Excuse me, do you guys want to go see a show tonight? Oh, it's a really, really random. We've just bought tickets now. We can't go. Yeah, if you're interested. Yeah, I've been called to watch. We will rock you. We will rock you. I want the musical. Yeah. I love it. It's meant to be really good. They're half price tickets. I mean, we got them for 34 pounds each, so they're, they're a great deal. 60 quid for two? It's a bargain. Will these marks really buy theatre tickets from people they've just met in a pub? Yep. A good deal all round. <laughs> there you go. Oh, 60. Thank there you. There you go. Oh, thanks. Good. What do you oh, I'm glad, glad you two are here. <laughs> I should go. Jess has sold the £68 tickets to these two musical fans for 60 Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. I'm glad you can go. Thank you. All right. Yeah, have a good time. You can go. Good All right. See ya. Bye. See ya. She's got most of her money back, and the girls can look forward to a great night out. So what's the scam? Have they handed over £60 for dodgy fakes? Absolutely not. They've just bought 100% genuine tickets for tonight's performance. Oh, she seems sweet, though. They're nice. But they won't be banging their heads along to Bohemian Rhapsody. In fact, they'll never even see the curtain rise. And here's why. When Jess left the pub, she really did go to a ticket office. But instead of walking up to the window, she waited just around a corner. Seeing two customers walk off with tickets in hand, she made her move. Excuse me. Excuse me, hi. So have you just uh, bought some theatre tickets? I'm really, really sorry. It's my fault. I work at the box office. Where they've actually sold you your tickets, I was meant to reserve those seats for a party of 20. So if it's OK with you, would you mind if I upgrade your tickets to the stalls? They're our most expensive seats. Because it's got the ones you want to be better than these. Oh, they're, they're the stalls that are the most expensive ones. But I take those back for you. Just want to come to the front. Right. With the promise of a free upgrade, these theatre-goers happily handed over their tickets. Jess didn't care which show they were for. The more popular, the better. On the right, I'll be right there. 
And that's the last time they ever saw Jess or their tickets. On her way back to the pub, Jess then sent a text to Paul. His cue to receive a fake phone call from his imaginary boss. Back at the ticket booth, the customers had soon had enough of waiting for Jess to appear behind the window. We were just walking away and a woman asked us for the tickets that we bought. She said, because apparently there was a block of 20 seats reserved. But the sales assistant couldn't help and called the manager. Well, what would she look like? Dark hair. Short, striped top. No one works here like that. Seriously? Fortunately for these two girls, the manager cancelled their original tickets, allowing them to pick up new ones at the theatre. They didn't lose any money, just a few minutes of their evening. The same can't be said for the other two theatre-goers who paid £60 for a show they'll never see. We're going to go watch... What is it called? We, we will, will rock, rock you now. Plans yeah. have changed. We got some tickets. Uh, we got them £30 each, which we thought was quite good. Where she came from was like the side door to the box office, so I thought she was going to come back, but yeah. she didn't. Yeah, but she was very convincing. Yeah. <laughs> we told the marks the tickets they spent £60 on have been cancelled and are now worthless. I'm gutted. I'm f***ed off. <laughs> A common technique used by hustlers is to put the mark in a situation that they don't expect. In this case, by offering them a good deal if they simply comply with their instructions. Of course, they're on the street and this person looks like they must have come from somewhere simply because she's not wearing a jacket. And they give up the tickets. Now, even though they can go and claim those tickets again and have them replaced, we're able to sell genuine tickets to the marks in the bar. And even if they get into the theater, they're gonna find that those seats are already taken. Whenever anybody approaches you in the street, don't assume that they're in an official capacity. Make sure you find out exactly who they are before you have any dealings with them. And if someone offers you an upgrade of anything, make sure you receive that upgrade before handing over your original purchase. If you buy tickets for anything from a man in a pub, there is a chance that those tickets might be stolen. If the loser has reported the theft of the tickets, you could turn up, find yourself met, by the police who want to know where you bought them. Instead of seeing the show, you can spend the evening in the police station explaining your actions. So don't buy from people in pubs. This is The Real Hustle on Holiday. In this series, Alex, Jess and Paul expose to our hidden cameras the scams that cheat tourists and travellers out of their hard-earned holiday money. On tonight's show, Paul rings up a nice little profit. How much do you want? Oh, hello. Lisa Mafia's got 21 seconds to lose a tenner. Cash, because I know I can do that. And Jess makes these tourists feel right at home. You've only been here two minutes. You're caught off guard, aren't you? All the people on this show have been hustled for real. And after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. The sun is setting over the historic city of Malaga on the south coast of Spain. After spending hours lazing on the beach, holidaymakers head into the center to finish off a perfect day. And here to ruin it is Paul. He set up a kiosk selling snacks and drinks to tourists. But he's hoping his latest product will turn out to be a bestseller. This is the phone home hustle. Calling Britain from abroad can be expensive, but not if you use the phone card Paul selling, which promises an incredible rate of just two cents per minute. Hola. Hola. 
giggles. Yep. Uh, they sell international phone cards. Yep. These are the best ones. Two cents a minute now, I think. With such a great price, this customer decides to borrow some extra cash from his mate. How many? Uh, four. The mark is making the most of the great offer and buys several cards in one go. Four. There you go. Thank you very much. Enjoy. It's a good start to Paul's evening, and it's not long before some more customers pay a visit to his kiosk. Hola. Do you speak English? Like a native. OK. <laughs> And can we have one of these your uh, local? Sure. Please. Uh, five euros. Okay. Don't be ripped off by your mobile network on the UK 80% cheaper deal. This girl knows a good deal when she sees one. Enjoy. Perfect. Thank Great. you. Take care. The mark immediately puts her new phone card to good use with a call back to the UK. Hola. How much do you want? Oh, hello. Please, Can I have a euro card, please? Sure. Yeah. Five euros. Thank you. Thank you. Paul sold six cards in the space of a couple of hours and is feeling pretty pleased with himself. But if he's only selling them for five euros each, how is he making a profit? The previous customer returns, not looking too happy with her purchase. Excuse me. I just bought this like two minutes ago. Mm -hmm. And I just called England and it only gave me like three minutes. That's not right. The only thing I can tell you to do is to call one of these numbers. There's no chance of a refund. I mean, two and a half I, minutes. I can't ago. refund you, but what to do is if you give them your number, what they should do tomorrow is they'll credit you with the original amount of money, but they usually give you a bonus credit as well. And they'll do that, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, I'm sure you're telling me the truth. Obviously. But you might have been talking <laughs> since you left here. I you might be gone. trying to con me. I haven't been gone 250 minutes. So no, that's true, yeah. You I should have had plenty. Trust me, I've seen every con in the book. But if you call them, they should be able to help you. Okay? <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, bye, bye bye. Bye bye. So they've been ripped off but they don't know the half of it. Here's how a phone card works. You dial a free phone number on the card. Then you type in the UK number you want to phone. And the company connects your call straight through at the cheap rate. You just buy however many minutes of connection time you want on a scratch card. But the hustler's free phone number isn't as free as the marks think. In fact, it's a premium rate line which adds several pounds per minute to a mobile phone bill. And because the number belongs to the hustlers, that money goes straight into their pockets. It said two cents a minute. I called my gran, and I got two and a half minutes. <laughs> Took it back, and he won't give me my money back. Apparently, if I call tomorrow, I might get my money back, but might not. Calling the helpline number on the card definitely won't get her money back. In fact, it's another premium rate line. In that case, what can you do? <laughs> Go back in, kick his head in, I don't know. Always make sure you know exactly what deal you're getting from a phone card. If you're unsure about which one to buy, then ask around. Ask fellow travellers, ask local people, see which ones they use, and then you can make your decision from there. Because the moment you walk away from the shop, then you can't go back. How are you? Nice to see you. Money won is twice as sweet as money earned. You might as well say goodbye now. And money won from a celebrity is even sweeter. <laughs> I am on the verge of crying. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. We'll see if you can do it. Oh. In the Celebrity Con Games. Hello. Hello. This week, the hustlers are up against former member of So Solid crew, solo artist in her own right, and winner of Celeb Air, Lisa Mafia. I probably show. have, and uh, you don't know. Sorry, didn't even know it. Still don't know now. Interesting. <laughs> well, obviously we've, we've brought you down here yes. for a reason. For yeah. Like, um, have you got ten pounds on you? I have. you have. Lisa doesn't know it yet, but her ten is not just the wager for the challenge; it's part of the challenge. Um, I've got a question for you. 
how many times do you think you can fold this ten pound note in half? It's like over and then again and then again. About about six maybe. About six times. Yeah. Well, go. Okay. Let's see. So what? Well, just over and over and over. Over and over. And over, and over. Okay. So that's one, isn't it? Yeah. One. One. Two. 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 Three. Three. Four. Four. Five. 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 Okay. I'm going to get me six. I have hey. to get it. Oh, that would be good. Do you think oh. you could do seven? Yeah, you have to oh, seven. That's six folds. She was spot on. That's a good guess. It was a good guess. But quite a small piece of paper, a ten pound. Yeah. Because the seventh wasn't so much of a fold. That wasn't really it was no, a dent. It was like a dent. <laughs> so, with this um, A4 piece of paper, I mean, that's about, what, seven, eight times bigger? How many times do you think you'd be able to fold this? Just like you have done with this ten pound note, bear in mind the size. Uh, maybe 30? 30 times that you in can half. fold it in, in half. half. In half, yeah. Okay. okay. Well, let's, uh... What about if we did something a little bit bigger? What about this newspaper? Wow. As in half, half, just like you did with the tampon. At note. least, at least 60, maybe? That you can fold, 60 times you can fold this paper yeah. 60 times, half and half and half. Yeah, probably about, maybe. About... And it's thinner too, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Jess is about to offer Lisa an amazing sounding bet. Well, how about for every fold you do after eight folds, I'll give you a ten pound note. So for after if you do eight. nine if you do nine folds, I'll give you a ten. If you do ten folds, I'll give you another ten. Oh so God. on and so forth. Like Twenty quid if you do ten, thirty if you do eleven, forty and so on and so forth. What's the catch? Because I know I can do that. Then well, go for I'll it. Tell you what, if you can, if you we can. get to keep the ten. Yeah. So Lisa's confident that she can fold the newspaper in half sixty times. If she does, it'll be a good five minutes work she'd make a whopping £520 from the Hustlers. Do you want to start going? Completely okay. like you yeah. did with this. So, so that's um, one. She's off. One. We'll, we'll be counting, make sure. I'm going to go that way. I'm going to go that way, yeah. Okay. Okay. Two. Two. I know that's making it small already. <gasps> Three. Three. Four. Oh, my gosh. I'm so... Can I start again? Lisa's just discovered the catch. Five. Six. Oh my god. Seven. Seven. That's eight. Oh, can you manage eight just about? Eight. Wait. Everything after eight, you get a turn off for. Sixty folds is looking unlikely. That's not really a fold though. Eight. That's not really oh. still number eight. I'll give you the eight. Just about. Can you do nine? No. Oh, uh, <laughs> she folds. And how yeah. many did you think you could do? Was it you sixty? Sixty. Yeah. After eight folds, paper is an incredible two hundred and fifty-six times thicker. Even the best paper folders in the world can't go higher than nine folds in half with their bare hands, no matter how big the paper. If Lisa had managed to fold it 60 times, it would be pretty thick. In fact, more than a billion, billion times thicker than one sheet, which is thick enough to reach from here to the sun and back 38 times. So that's another celebrity tenor for the hustlers, though this one is slightly more creased than usual. <laughs> you know why you can't fold that anymore? No, it's just so solid. Just, just, uh, yeah. Wait, that was a good one. That was good, that was good. That's that's good. <laughs> Still to come, Paul takes these parkers for a ride. Joking with me. And Alex goes out with a bang. Oh! <laughs> If you're planning a holiday this year and don't want to run into any hustlers, here's some essential advice to get you on your way. Most people's holidays turn out to be exactly what they'd hoped for, relaxing and enjoyable. But sometimes things do go horribly wrong. And the thing to do here is to be prepared. Before you go on holiday, make sure you've got a comprehensive travel insurance. And what we mean by comprehensive is an insurance that covers you both for things that are stolen or that you've lost, and also for any emergency medical treatment. Now, if something does happen to you abroad, do contact the police. No matter how trivial you think the crime was, do contact the police. They will be able to advise you and also they'll be able to issue you with the police incident number which will help you in any claims you wish to make when you get back home. Millions of tourists visit the historic city of Oxford every year. And with so many sightseers, parking is at a premium. Most visitors are willing to pay for the privilege 
and Paul has come to this city centre car park to help them do exactly that. Really pay for the privilege. This is the Superpass. Paul's come prepared for his afternoon out. With his badge, fluorescent jacket and clipboard, he looks like he was born to work in a car park. Now he just needs some motorists to arrive so he can help them spend their money. Afternoon. Can I ask how long you're going to be, roughly? Um, one, two hours. It's up to you, but uh, we have a one-day pass for five pounds now, which is a new programme we've started. It means if you're a little bit late, you won't get charged six or seven pounds. Uh, you might as well, then. Mm. Yeah. Can I have your uh, ticket there, stamp it. So here's the deal. Instead of paying by the hour before they exit, motorists can buy a £5 super pass from Paul, which allows them to park here all day long. That's £5. To most visitors, that sounds like a bargain. All right, take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Can I ask how long you're staying for, folks? Uh, five hours. Do you know about the super pass programme? If you pay by the hour, it's about three, four pounds an hour. Five pounds is super pass for the day if you want it. It's up to you. Yeah, just, uh, there you go, thank you. And do you have your uh, ticket, please? Another quick stamp on the ticket. There you go, when you go out, just use this. And another quick fiver into Paul's pocket. Okay, great, take care, bye bye. Hi there, we have a super pass program now. Five pounds is for the whole day right. on the way out. I mean, when I get yeah. to the gate, though, what happens? Um, yeah, it'll scan straight through. All right, okay. Scan straight through. Of course, there is no such thing as a super pass. Paul's just knocked up a cheap stamp that prints the word on the parking ticket, and it certainly won't open the exit gate. Five pounds. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Paul doesn't want to work the car park for too long, because once his customers start returning, he'll have a lot of explaining to do. Morning. So he's going to use his final mark to help him make his getaway. Uh, it's five pounds. Great. Paul doesn't actually stamp this mark's pass. He keeps it and hands back his very own parking ticket instead. Of course, it now has the magic word super pass stamped on it. Once the motorist has walked out of sight, Paul puts the ticket to good use in the payment machine. It only cost him one pound. After all, the marks only just arrived at the car park. That's a pretty lucrative 30 minutes. And one very satisfied hustler. Off to another Oxford car park to relieve some more tourists of their spending money. Later that day, some of the motorists return to their cars. And with their Superpass ticket, they don't go anywhere near the payment machine but they're about to find out that their super pass isn't so super after all. This is obviously a job for a man. The barrier won't open because the parking hasn't been paid for. And everyone that tries to leave without paying at the machine has the same problem. It's not long before the traffic chaos at the barrier attracts the attention of a real parking supervisor. Hello, can I help at all? Yeah, um, got the super pass. Super pass? It's not a promotion, I mean, it's not a normal entry ticket, I mean... Of course, he's never heard of a super pass. So he was wearing one of a bright yellow thing. We've got no promotions at all, so I'm afraid... But I paid five pounds and he was like... Not according to the ticket, unfortunately, you need to go along to the pay machine, which is just over there, and pay for your parking. So that means a guy took five pounds off me? It sounds that way, I'm afraid, yeah. Certainly, it's not a promotion we're doing here. We asked the Marks how they were enjoying their day out. A bit cross about it, um, considering, obviously, giving five pounds, now we have to pay That's and probably nice. another six pounds, yeah. Um, so all in all, we spent £11 just to park a car for two hours. 
It was a guy in a high-vis jacket, so I just assumed that he was a car park attendant. You said it was like four pounds an yeah. hour, so we thought we'd make the most of it. Yeah. As we know, if a deal is too good to be true, it probably is. And just because someone's wearing a high-vis jacket, that doesn't make the deal any more legitimate. If you're suspicious about anything like that, then check with the proper parking authorities. When on holiday, it doesn't get much better than relaxing in the sun with a drink in your hand. Except if that drink is free. The hostlers are going to show you how to win drinks from your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hostlers always have the edge. And you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. I will have a gin and tonic, please. Alex is out in a seaside bar and he fancies a free drink. Balloons! Yay! What is a grown man doing with balloons in his pocket? To hear that, to I don't honest. know. <laughs> Which one would you like? I'd like the red one, please. The red one. Yes. Okay. I've got to be blue for boys. Blue for boys. Leaves me with pink. Thank you. <laughs> so blow them up. Not too big. And tie a good. Tie it up. Great. Brilliant. That's it. Excellent. You got it. Alright, here's my question. How long do you think you could hold that balloon? over that flame before it bursts. You can't hold it up here. Okay. You've got to hold it like, wah. <laughs> just just touching almo almost touching, yeah. How long do you reckon it'll last? Not very long. Not very long. Second? Two seconds? A couple of seconds. Yeah, a couple, couple of seconds. seconds. Yeah. All right, you can go first, put it on the flame. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> touch, touch it. Touch it. OK, yeah. that's that just about burst as it touches the flame. Okay, it, yes. Real. Who wants to go next? Who thinks they can better that? So you're trying to beat about a second. So you're trying to warm the balloon up, <laughs> get it used to the idea that it's going to be very hot in a second now. That's pretty good. You've got the wind helping you out. Whoa! OK. I would say that was about 10 seconds. All right. But it's got, it, it, it's got to be close to the flame, right? Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to use one of these balloons and I am going to hold it over for at least 30 seconds. How long? Um, you could choose which balloon I do. At least 30 seconds. On the flame? On the flame. A la pancha. If I could do it, could you guys buy me a drink? Alright? Yeah. Can, yeah. yeah. can I have a shake on that? Definitely. Okay. Yeah. No chance going to do it. Which one do you want me to use? The pink. Girl choice. Uh, <laughs> right. Is that the trick? Well, what he does not up. Ready? Yeah, you timing? Oh, am I touching the flame? Because I can't actually see. Yeah. yeah. I can yeah. see that. <laughs> now, do I have to sit here for 30 <laughs> seconds? Do you want me to hold it? You've been sitting here for about half hour. I just... <laughs> I should have timed that, shouldn't I? <laughs> oh! <laughs> the trick here is that Alex started by taking a mag full of water. The water then went into the balloon before he blew it up. Instead of quickly heating the balloon to breaking point, all the heat from the flame went straight into the water, keeping the balloon nice and cool and intact. And that's how Alex achieved his record-breaking time. That was 30 seconds. Right? I didn't think that. <laughs> that was very good. That was very good. More and more holidaymakers are choosing to spend their time off in Britain rather than going abroad, staying in hotels, B&Bs and cottages. Jess has come to an area full of holiday rental properties. She's going to make some tourists hand over their hard-earned spending money. And she's going to do it by giving them a present. This is the gift basket con. 
Jess knows that today's the main changeover day for rentals in this area, and she's looking for some new arrivals. I'm from the management company. Just wanted to check that you're okay and you got the key and everything. You have? Oh, good. Bingo. Got you some little goodies as well. These tourists weren't expecting anyone from the rental agency, but who doesn't like a free gift? Did you get the key? Oh, yeah, I found it, yeah. Oh, excellent. Oh, good. I was a little bit worried, so I thought I'd just pop round. Um, I need to just quickly change the remote control as well. That's OK in the living room. All oh, right. Um, we just had a new system put in, and all the old remotes are still there, so you wouldn't really be getting very far with them. All oh, right. Oh, we don't have to check yet. Have you not? All oh, right. Do you like it, though? Is everything oh, it's it's lovely? lovely isn't yeah, it? it's really big. We've only just got here. Jess walks off ahead giving her a crucial few moments alone in the sitting room. Can I just show you with this fire as well? I mean, it's not really a big deal. When you start it up, you might smell a little bit of paint as well, but... So far, all Jess has done is hand out gifts and helpful advice. How is she going to turn this home visit into a profitable hustle? Here comes the killer question. Um, also, do they talk to you about um, the deposit that you need to be leaving? All right, Over the phone. Um... No. You know, it's, it's, a, um, it's a £200 deposit just for any damages and stuff like that. It's just standard. That's all. Yeah. Sorry, do you want to sit down? Oh, right. Yeah. Right, you're out of a seat. Um, yeah. No, it's just standard procedure, so I need to get that off you today. Then I'll come back in a couple of days and I'll be able to give that back to you. Oh, right. It's just to make sure that, you know, there's no vases or anything that, that break. And we had, a, we had a chap here not so long ago, kept bashing his head on the ceiling. So oh, I was like, yeah, yeah just, yeah, just start. I just said, did you? <laughs> the breakage deposit comes as a bit of a surprise to the marks. After all, the rent has already been paid in advance. Did I not tell you about that? No. No. no All <laughs> oh, right, because I assumed that because um, they hadn't done it, then you were paying in cash. That's why I brought my little receipt book with me. All right. That's all. Will the marks really hand over £200 to a stranger that's just knocked on their front door? <laughs> they don't really have much choice. <laughs> Are all these beans are rigid? They are, yeah. Isn't it? As one mark goes off to find her purse, Jess shares some more of her intimate knowledge of the cottage with the other mark. How much have you? I've got it, it's 200, that's spot yeah, on. It's 200, that's great. Me and my sister Thank you. Oh. <laughs> oh no, we're taking all your money. No, I can guess. Is, it... Is that okay? Yeah. Just come. That's one holiday off to an expensive start. And that's your receipt. I'll come back and oh, I'll, um, okay. I'll drop this back off to you in a couple of days. Yeah. Um, if you need anything, in the basket, there's my personal number. Uh, yeah. There's the management as well. Thank Have a lovely much. stay. If you need oh, anything, thanks. just give us a call. Yeah, I'm only right. 10 minutes away. All right. Okay, okay. You take care. Okay, bye. Right. You're welcome. <laughs> Enjoy your stay. Bye. 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 It's that simple. Jess has made £200 in just five minutes. But the Marks do still have that luxury gift basket to enjoy. So how did Jess know all the intimate details of the cottage? Hello. Hi, I'm Susie. I'm from the management company. She didn't. She just walked around like she'd been there a hundred times before. Um, yeah, did you get the key? It's, it's oh, yeah, I found it, yeah. Oh, excellent. Oh, good. I need to just quickly change the remote control as well. And though it sounded like she knew what she was talking about... Can I just show you with this fire as well? Everything she said would have been true for any cottage in this area. We had a, we had a chap here, not so long ago, kept bashing his head on the ceiling, so oh. I was like, yeah... But it was all accurate enough... Are all these beans original? They are, yeah. ..that the Marks never questioned her credentials. But have a lovely stay. If you need anything, just give us a call. And what about the luxury gift basket? Unfortunately for the Marks, it's full of the kind of luxury you get from free brochures and a trip to the local pound shop. It's worth all of £9. We told the Marks that they'd just been the victims of a con trick. Look at this. It's 200 quid. We'd only been here two minutes and, and you're caught off guard, aren't you? Next time it's going to be a professional ID, a phone number, and I'm going to phone that number up and check it before they leave or I'd give a deposit. It's the only way. 
When people leave the city and they go abroad, they go to the country, they tend to let their guard down a little bit. Now, Jess shows up and she looks the part and she uses one very good psychological trick. She gives them a gift. Now, a gift, no matter how inexpensive it is, makes the other person feel indebted to you. Um, they're liable to give you stuff in return. In this case, money. You can start your security for your holiday well before you travel. Make sure that you understand what you're being asked to pay, if there are going to be any additional charges. Then when you turn up and you're in that kind of very relaxed holiday mood and maybe your guard's down a bit, if somebody does come to you and ask you for more money, whether it's a deposit for food or, or anything at all, just make sure you think, well, that's a surprise. I'll ring the person I booked from. I'll ring the holiday company. I will double check. This is The Real Hustle on Holiday. In this series, Alex, Jess and Paul expose to our hidden cameras the scams that cheat tourists and travellers out of their hard-earned holiday money. On tonight's show, Paul's really faking it. <laughs> Kit and Liz McLaren and folks out to tenor. It is hard, yeah, it is hard. And why helping this damsel in distress is a very bad idea. people on this show have been hustled for real and after being given their money back they agreed that the footage could be shown so you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams it's market day in the Spanish holiday town of Fengirola holiday makers and locals are out to catch some rays and find themselves a bargain and this morning, there's a new bric-a-brac stall in the market, run by Paul. His prices might look fair, but in actual fact, anything from this stall will cost unwary tourists a lot more than they realise. This is the counterfeit con. Paul's eye-catching display is attracting plenty of interest so it shouldn't be long before he can persuade someone to hand over their cash. Good morning. Hi, yeah. oh, look. These holiday makers are interested in Paul's antique spoons, so he shows off his expert knowledge. I think it's from uh, kind of like a Jubilee thing. I'll probably do that one for 10. 10? Yeah. This is a very nice one here as well. Again, I can do that one for 10 for you. I can do three for 20. Mommy said that I have to pay for the magnets. You do? Yeah, it looks like a dragon. I'll do you four for 20 as so long as the little girl gets hers. How's that? Oh. How's that? Do you want that one? What a softie. Yeah. I'm, too, I'm too kind. <laughs> and who could deny the little girl her souvenir? 20 euros, please. Out comes the cash. Paul's taking a closer look at that note. He carries out a check with his counterfeit note pen. I'm sorry, that one's a... We've been told to look out for these. So if it makes a mark like that. The news isn't good. It's a fake. Do you have another one? The marks are naturally embarrassed having tried to spend a dodgy 20 so they immediately get out a different note. Yeah, I feel like I'll show you. Always willing to help a tourist, Paul shows them how to tell the difference between a real note and the fake. You can tell that they look, they look almost exactly the same. This one's just a little bit darker, yeah, see yeah, that? Yeah. And it's also not exactly the same size. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah, sorry. 
Sorry about that. So the bad news is that they've tried to pass off a dodgy note. Welcome. But the good news is that they've got themselves a great bargain. They've paid just 20 euros for a set of four collectible spoons. Or have they? Let's go back and take a closer look at the transaction. After Paul received the original 20 euros from the mark, it wasn't just his security pen he took from the van. He also switched the perfectly good note for a fake one that was hidden inside. With the real 20 euros safely in his van, it was his own note that he tested. As it was a fake, the pen brought up a bright blue mark on the paper. The customer had no reason to suspect his note had been switched and handed over another 20 euros to pay for the spoons. So, rather than getting themselves a bargain, the marks actually paid double and unwittingly lumbered themselves with a forged banknote in the process. We told the marks that their note was good all along. No. Oh. You mean he did a switch? No, he couldn't. No, I gave it to him and he did it with a pen. You know, <laughs> he couldn't have, you know, I mean, I would have seen a switch, wouldn't I? I might have done. I'm an East Ender and I never thought I could get scammed. This scam works very well because of the massive embarrassment factor. If you accuse somebody of handing you over a fake note and they're a foreigner in that country, and also they don't know what to look for, then it becomes very, very difficult for them to stand up and fight for their rights. Always familiarize yourself with the local currency when you're abroad, and always check the authenticity of any notes when you receive one or hand one over. There is a risk of you being passed a fake note, particularly as a tourist if you're not familiar with the currency. Um, but that's a risk you have to take in most countries, I think. It's not just in Spain. If you do get handed a fake note, I'm afraid there's not much you can do about it, apart from complain to the police, if you can identify the shop or the place where you got it from. When on holiday, it doesn't get much better than relaxing in the sun with a drink in your hand, except if that drink is free. The hostlers are going to show you how to win drinks from your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hostlers always have the edge, and you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. I will have a gin and tonic, please. Alex is out for a drink in a Spanish seaside bar, but he's not planning to spend any of his own money. Here's the bet. It's for a round of drinks. So it could be a costly bet. No, I'm kidding, look. I propose that I can make this glass spin twice on itself, yeah? With one hand, but without letting go. I don't want to spill anything. So you'll see the lemon go, uno, dos, okay? Round itself. It's gonna be off the table. You can hold it in one hand and one grip. You can't use two hands to go like that, OK? And you can't do silly things like hold it and then go like that, because that's not spinning around itself, it's just spinning around you. Yeah. You can't put it on the table and sort of walk around the table, right? You're going to be holding in your hand, and you've got to spin it around. Twice. I'll tell you what, we'll do it for two rounds of drinks, because you're doing it twice. <laughs> and, you know, we're on holiday. <laughs> Any ideas? I don't want to go because I've got the glass. <laughs> what are you going to do with it? You've got an you idea, haven't you? I'm trying to... I'll drop it. Why are you going to drop it? <laughs> oh, you're trying to do it with your fingers? <laughs> yeah, you will drop That's it. That's what I was going to do. The lemon's going to spin round. So you're going to make the glass... The no. <laughs> Not allowed to put your finger in my drink either. Can I do it like that? No, you can't. You're letting go of the glass. You've got to hold, hold on to the glass. Oh, you see, you're, you're moving it around in your fingers. You've got to hold the glass and make a spin. I can't do it definitely If I can do it, would you buy me a drink? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Right, so here we go. Starts here. Uh-huh. Watch the lemon. Not me, just the lemon. <laughs> ready? Well, yeah, that's one. Yeah. 
twice. <laughs> Two rounds of drinks, please. Thank you. Bars that way. It's all in the wrist. Alex rotated the glass once under his elbow and continued the motion, giving it one more rotation above the elbow, being careful not to spill his drink in the process. Yeah. 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 There you go. Still to come. Jess is feeling a little flat. Do you know how to change a tyre by any chance? Lucky tickets. And Alex puts the unfair into fun fair. Yeah, we need to get three more. If you're planning a holiday this year and don't want to run into any hustlers, here's some essential advice to get you on your way. You're never more likely to be conned than when traveling. So here's a few common sense tips if you're traveling abroad, particularly about documents. The most important document, of course, would be your passport. A lot of countries ask you to carry your passport at all times, but that can be very dangerous because if you are robbed, you'll lose that as well as your money. I would recommend keeping it in the hotel in the hotel room safe or in the safe downstairs, and carrying a photocopy and some other form of identification, such as a driving license. You also want to be very careful with your insurance documents. In fact, anything that contains your private information. Make sure that you take photocopies of all of these important documents and keep those in a separate place from the originals. So just in case the worst happens, at least you can show people what the replacement should look like. These are the historic docks in Liverpool. Jess is in one of the main marina car parks, and it looks like she's in a spot of bother. She has a flat tire. And though she's managed to jack the car up, she has no idea what to do next. What she needs is someone to give her a helping hand. This is the Good Samaritan scam. Hopefully, the occupants of this car will be the kind of people who don't mind helping a complete stranger. Excuse me. Hiya. Do you know how to change a tyre by any chance? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Could you help me, please? I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. I managed to jack it up, and that's about it. You... The scam is on. Okay, so you know Their willingness to do a good deed has just made these motorists the marks. Jacked it up properly, is it um, off the ground? I guess so, yeah. I'm not, yeah. I'm not, not really know how to do these things. <laughs> is it not? Do you need no. to do that? Okay. After standing here so long in the cold sea breeze, Jess is naturally feeling the chill. So she has one more favour to ask of her new friends. So wait, can I be really, really cheeky? I've just seen you come in. Has your car got a heater in it? Yeah, yeah. Do you mind if I just go quickly sit in it and make a phone call? I'm right with is it. that okay? Yeah. I'm absolutely freezing. Thank you. Well, I can just watch, watch what you're doing. Oh, thank you. Of course, she can't run the heater without the car keys. Thank you very much. Just that green one over there. Thank you. I'll be two seconds. I can go for my dad. Being a gent, the mark does the honourable thing and lets Jess wait in his car to warm up. Though he's keeping a good eye on the damsel in distress and his car, while his girlfriend gets her hands dirty. But the moment his back is turned, this good deed goes bad. Right, where's the car, then? What? Before he realises what's happened, the Mark's car is gone. And he's not happy. So why has Jess stolen his wheels, leaving her own perfectly good car behind? Because it was never her car to start with. Let's take a look at what really happened. Jess wasn't working alone. This was a three-hustler scam. The hustlers arrived and pulled up by a parked car. They'd come prepared with all the tools they needed. 
the cheapest spare tyre and jack money could buy. Alex jacked up the car and let the air out of a front tyre. With the man work done, it was time for Jess to step in and play her role as the damsel in distress. Alex and Paul then pulled up across the car park where they could keep an eye on proceedings and waited. Thank you. I'll be two seconds. I'm going to call my dad. Once Jess had secured some marks and persuaded them to hand over their car keys, Alex and Paul made their moves. Jess got into the marked passenger seat and put the keys in the ignition. Alex also headed over to the car, but timing was critical. He had to wait for Paul to pull up right in front of the marks in the hustler's van. For a matter of seconds, the van completely blocked the marks' view of his car. Long enough for Alex to jump in the driver's seat and disappear. Followed shortly afterwards by Paul. But the Mark's troubles aren't over yet. They have some explaining to do to the real owners of the broken down car. Who return to find their vehicle with its wheel in the air. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Have they pinched my wheel and put different wheels on? No, no, we, we, know, we were doing that. She, she came, she came over this nice like... pretty lady came along and said, oh, do you mind just changing the uh, wheel in the car? She and said, can I come over here and shake and sit in your car for a while? Because she was really nice. How do I get back up down to drive? She was a bit cold, so she was uh, wanting to get my car just to warm up for a bit. I thought it would be all right, but... Loved. It was horrible because I've only just had it about two weeks. I thought that I'm um, trying to get off with my lovely little car. I think I looked down to try and take another thing off the, the wheel and then she had driven, driven off in the <laughs> car. This scam plays on the Mark's good nature and a damsel in distress is an excellent way to get a hold of someone's car keys. Now, we would never advocate not helping somebody when they're in distress, but always take account of the situation first before you get involved. In our case, we had people handing over their car keys to someone they had met 10 seconds ago. It's really not a very smart thing to do. How are you? Nice to see, to see you. you. Money won is twice as sweet as money earned. You might as well say goodbye now. And money won from a celebrity is even sweeter. I am the verge of crying. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Let's see if you can do it. Oh. In the Celebrity Kong Games. This week, the hustlers are going to do battle with Atomic Kitten, TV presenter, and winner of Celebrity MasterChef, Liz McLaren. Have you ever been conned or hustled before? No, I, think, I think I'm a bit suspicious. I'm always a bit are you? suspicious, yeah. yeah. Good, this will be good. I'm intrigued. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all right. What can we possibly what be asking you to do? No, not not cooking anything, obviously. Is it some kind of electrical experiment or something? Um, there is £10 involved. And you'll have money involved. Uh, hey, I mean, you know. Yeah. Do you have any change? Chris Brown. Just a, just a £10 note. Just a 10 just And it's real. There's Liz's tenner. But for this challenge, she's going to need some smaller change. There we go, there's five and five. So we've got... Well, ten pounds. Ten pounds. Five plus five. It takes ten. me a while, yeah, it's early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have uh, a good end fair? Carnival? Yeah. Playing any of the games? Yeah. This is a carnival game. Oh, OK. But it's also the kind of scam someone would make up and play in a bar, but in a very, very dodgy bar. Okay. okay. Yeah, Time for Paul to explain exactly how this carnival game works. Okay, this is for you. This is kind of the rock and roll fork. Okay. okay. <laughs> and uh, we've got a bottle. And it's very, very simple. All you have to do, using the fork and not your fingers, this groove, this groove here, mm. this, you just happen to fit right into that groove. And that's what, what you need to use. That's the secret. Okay. You go under and you get to use a delicate touch. I did a little it, bit. It can be done. Uh -huh. So Liz has to use the fork to stand the bottle upright. 
without it toppling over. Looks simple. Not only that, she has 10 goes to get it right. One for each pound coin. I know it's going to be the kiss of death, but it looks easy, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. The problem is, there is money on the line. OK. <laughs> Scared? <laughs> Use the fork, Liz. Okay. Be careful, we'll want to roll around, so try and stop it. OK. See, oh. see, these Whoa. Lines? Whoa. see these lines? Yeah. If you go over these lines, you lose. Oh! See? Did I forget to mention that? Yes! Oh, it's not as easy as it looks. One pound down, nine to go. Uh, yeah, I'm back. Let's just move it, it won't do anything. Ah! Oh, <laughs> it's blooming hard! It is hard, yeah, it is hard. Too. That was close. I see what the problem is. It's rolling to the side, and you're going to keep going over these lines, you're going to keep losing. So to help you out, I'm going to support the bottom with two other points. Okay. <laughs> so, thumb please. Surely now Liz will be able to do it. Oh. Or maybe not. <laughs> Three pounds. Oh. 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 <laughs> Almost. Definitely will be worth another go. Slow down. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Bit right. slow at the end. Last go. Oh. 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 Last go. So it's just a little bit slower. It's the last chance for Liz to win that tenner. Okay. I'm nervous. I'm so... I don't know about you. I'm just annoyed now. I'm just annoyed. <laughs> oh. Oh. It's no good. She's bottled it. You lose. I'm not going out tonight. No. You're not going out tonight. Actually, she never had a chance in the first place. And here's why. The secret's in the bottle, because if you do it this way, it's completely impossible. If you do it this way, it can be done. If you roll the bottle like this, you'll see it's weighted. See oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's impossible to get a balanced bottle, usually. See? Just the way it rolls fast oh as well. Huh? When he did it, Paul turned the heavy side to the bottom, <laughs> meaning the bottle wouldn't overbalance when it stood upright. But he made sure that every time Liz tried, she started with a heavy side on top, <laughs> which meant it was sure to topple over no matter how carefully she lifted it. So that's another tenor going from the pocket of a celebrity into the pockets of the hustlers. Remember, it seems too good to be true. Guess what? It is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>this is Brighton Pier, world famous as a visitor attraction with its many amusements and fairground rides. Alex and Jess have come to see if they can get their hands on some tourist cash by setting up their own stall. They're offering prizes ranging from cuddly toys to expensive watches and MP3 players. This is the Lucky Ticket Scam. Lucky tickets. Lucky tickets. Lucky to come and play a lucky ticket. Oh, have you tickets. won something already? What have you got? Yeah. What have you won? Oh, adorable. And it cost me five, would it? It's Excellent. a bargain. <laughs> Two pounds for a handful of tickets. Any oh, even number wins. Wins you a prize. Can, I'll do it. Oh, <laughs> no persuasion needed. These customers each hand over two pounds for ten lucky tickets. I'll take the money. The rules of this game are easy. There's a big bucket and thousands of numbered tickets. Even numbered tickets are losers. Odd numbered tickets are winners. Five winners equals a top of the range MP3 player. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Alex counts out the tickets so they can rip them open and see if they've won. Ten. Oh, the odd ones. Oh. Odd ones are winning. I'm feeling lucky after my ticket. Yeah. <laughs> are you? 88. 57. Oh. That's an odd. That's a winner. Okay, That's we're going to put this over here. Straight away, these guys have picked a winner. In fact, Everyone that plays this game immediately has luck on their side. Hey, there's one. So how many odd numbers are in there? Half and half. Even the most suspicious of customers is an instant success. Oh, right. Okay. Eight, nine, 
leave one. Ah. Oh, odd. Excellent. Okay, two. Take one of those or one of these. So far, so good. Everyone has got themselves a small stuffed toy or a water pistol. That's safe. No one can take that away from them. I think obviously you've got the lucky streak. I have, yeah. <laughs> of course, with the hustlers around, there's no such thing as luck. The odd-even ticket scam is a game you'll find in fairgrounds both here and abroad. It's not always a scam, but when it is, your chances of winning are minute. The reason this works so well is that the operator has got complete control of the game. He can let the marks win or lose any time he wants by palming in winning tickets. The tickets aren't 50% odd and 50% even. In fact, every single ticket in the bucket is actually an even number. They are all losers. The only winning tickets are actually in Alex's pocket. And the only time they enter the game is when he intentionally adds a winner to the pile. That's why he always counts out the tickets before handing them back to the marks. And the instant win is only to get them hooked and make them spend more money. I'll tell you what, I'll let you bank those if you want to have one more go, or a couple more goes. I'll let you put these aside. So if you get five tickets, you win one of these uh, sunglasses. Jewelry. You're halfway there. So how many do we need to get to get one of those? You then? need to get three more. I love it. Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay. Give me another one. Seeing as they're so close to winning a star prize, the marks keep buying more tickets. Another, another digital camera. Uh, you need to get three more. Oh, hell, hey, I want more. An iPod. I haven't got an iPod. And every so often, they tear open another winning number. You've got another odd? Got another odd? OK, two more to go, and you can win the... Uh... One more. One more. <laughs> oh, boy. You sure? Yeah, yeah, one more go. But just as they get close to winning the big prize... Oh, no. ..the winning numbers completely dry up. Oh. Aww. Oh. You did so well last time. Oh. <laughs> what are the odds? Three, the odds are four, six, seven... That's the last one. Mm. That's it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> guys, you did so you well. <laughs> you get for four. Let me see what you get for four. I'll give you definitely one of these. 70 open tickets, but no star prize. We get two <laughs> Still, they're not walking away empty-handed. They've won themselves a cuddly toy and a plastic water pistol. Total value, 65p. Not a great return for £14. In fact, Alex doesn't let anybody get enough points to win the big prize. But those stuffed toys are absolutely flying off the shelf. It may only be a few quid at a time, but this game can bring in more than £100 an hour. And at that rate, the only winners here are the hustlers. Nice. Have fun with that. <laughs> We didn't do overly well on that Nearly. One. <laughs> Nearly. Got, got we four, nearly got, got it. Four odds, we needed five to yeah. get like a watch and all some sunglasses. Which was quite nice, but yeah. no, we set all those on the end. <laughs> <laughs> we needed two more to get an iPod, but we decided to cut our losses because we weren't doing that good <laughs> after all. We told the marks that there were never any winning tickets in the bucket. Well, Is that why you counted them? them? Oh. Well, who couldn't have done? You gave them... Because... We gave him the tickets. We gave him the tickets to count from, though. Games of chance and luck are all great fun, but you should only spend what you can afford. And remember that you're really paying for the entertainment value rather than actually expecting to win anything. If you think a game is crooked, just walk away. This is The Real Hustle on Holiday. In this series, Alex, Jess and Paul expose to our hidden cameras the scams that cheat tourists and travellers out of their hard-earned holiday money. On tonight's show, the hustlers check out of someone else's hotel. He must have put them somewhere. Ex-Eastender Joel Beckett chalks up a £10 loss. It's rather embarrassing, really. And this guy learns a lesson in how not to spend a student loan. <laughs>
All the people on this show have been hustled for real. And after being given their money back, they agreed that the footage could be shown so you can avoid being ripped off by the same scams. The hustler's holiday is coming to an end and it's time to pack up their bags and fly back to the UK. Paul and Jess are just leaving the hotel and always the gentleman, Paul's doing most of the heavy lifting with all that luggage. Actually, the hustlers aren't quite done turning over tourists yet because that wasn't their hotel and those certainly aren't their bags. This is the hotel checkout. It's changeover day at this Spanish tourist hotel and that means most guest holidays are over and they're preparing to go home. Here to make that sad day a little worse is Jess. Um, do you mind if I use your phone? Yes, no problem, okay, yes. Okay, thank okay. you. And it all starts with a simple phone call. She's ringing hotel rooms at random until she finds what she's looking for. Some guests that are about to check out. Morning. Oh, hi there. Um, I'm calling from reception. I've got you down as checking out today, and I'm just wondering if you wanted some assistance with your bags. Oh, that'll be lovely. Thank you very much. No problem. I'll send somebody up now. Oh, thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Result. So far, so good. Jess promised to send some manual labour to help with the bags, and she's not going to disappoint. Time to summon her very own bellboy. Paul doesn't look like he works for the hotel. Not yet, anyway. But a staff badge and a bellboy trolley is all it takes for an instant transformation. Having received the number in Jess's text, Paul knows exactly which room to head for. Morning, checking out today? Yes. Can I take your bags if that's okay? Is this it? Absolutely. Okay. And we do our best. Thank you. You have anything else you want us to take? All right, you need a receipt, yes. keep that, and uh, just give it to the uh, porter downstairs when you're ready to leave. Thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Two suitcases and one piece of hand luggage. Not bad. Not it. Some people. Probably best not to hang about, as the marks are likely to leave their room at any moment. Off with a jacket and tie, and Paul the bellboy becomes Paul the hotel guest again. It's that simple. A call on the hotel's internal phone system was all the convincing the marks needed to hand over their possessions. Hello. Hey, how are you? And the getaway car? That was also courtesy of the hotel. Do you as well? Would you like to order me a taxi, please? Yeah. Is that OK? Yeah. Thank you very much. So that's the final Spanish con over. And the hustlers head off to get to the airport early. After all, they've got extra bags to check in. Unfortunately for the Marks, their checkout won't be quite as trouble free. Can we pick up the 
your suitcases. Yeah, which shares your cast. Was someone just one of your gentlemen just being to pick them up from the room? I don't have any food anymore. If you could give me this place and suitcases if they come down here. Don't you don't know this? No, you must have got them down. He came with the trolley thing. Well, maybe Somebody rang me and said, would I like the service of someone to come and pick their cases up? Yeah. yeah. I checked with my colleague. Yeah, he must, have, he must have put them somewhere, OK? The receptionist can phone around as much as she likes. Nope. I'm very sorry. They're going to have to say adios to their bags. We caught up with the Marks to ask them about their last day on holiday. So this gentleman came, he had a staff on, he had the trolley, he had a couple of bags on the trolley and gave me this to give reception. The reception knows nothing about, Not it. Nothing about it. I've got my birthday present off, off um, my mum and my husband, which is a pair, a pair of diamond earrings there in there, so we need to get it back. Paul shows up to the door looking the part. He's ready, he's got his trolley, he's got his badge, he's got his uniform. There's nothing untoward there. But what really clinches the deal is Jess's phone call that apparently comes from reception. With all those details in play, the marks have got nothing to be suspicious about. You should never trust somebody with your belongings based on the fact that they look like they're working there in an official capacity. If you're ever unsure of anything or anyone, then contact the hotel reception and ask for some confirmation. How are you? Nice to see you. Money won is twice as sweet as money earned. You might as well say goodbye now. And money won from a celebrity is even sweeter. I am the verge of crying. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Let's we'll see if you can do it. Oh. In the Celebrity Con Games. This week, the hustlers are going to pull a fast one on Jake Moon from EastEnders, the guy who dated Dawn from The Office, also known as actor Joel Beckett. Have you ever been scammed yourself? Uh, I, I, yes, I have. Don't be embarrassed. No, I did do the classic, um, the guy at the petrol station with the watch. I got done for that one. They said, oh, these, are, these watches are out of um, BMWs and, you know, they usually retail at, like, 999 quid. And you're like, all right. And then it's actually 30 quid I pay then in the end. Is that the one you're wearing now? No. <laughs> How dare you? Um, so we've got you down here. Obviously, yep. for uh, for a bet. Yeah. Please tell me you've brought some money. Or we'll settle for the I, watch. I have brought some money. Yeah. Ten pounds. There we go. You can hand that over to the safe hands. That's me. That's Thank you. you. All right. Yeah. Do you play pool, by the way? Yeah. Okay, you, you don't have to be a pool ace for this. I'm not a just, pool ace, but I have played. But just play. You can yeah. hit a ball. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put uh, a three ball yeah. on the spot with a coin on top. All right. This is the bet. OK, you can take the cue ball and put it anywhere on the table you like. Yeah. But what you have to do is, with one strike, you've got to knock the ball and the 10 piece outside the circle. OK. Let me give you a cue. And there is some chalk over here. Um, and take the ball and put it anywhere you like. Are you competitive? Yes. So is this going to bug you? Yes. Good. This is already bugging you. Use me. that. Yes. So I'm going to give you three goes. You give me it. three goes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Are we cool? We're good. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, yeah. All right. It's game on. Step back. We should step back. Yeah. We should you get on step back. Right. Well, I'll just try. That's obviously not. Enough. Okay. Nowhere near. One down. Two to go. Try. Try anything you like. Okay. But... I'll go closer this time, but I think we've got ourselves what? a thinker. Okay. Ooh. That was close. But no cigar. This is it. Joel's last chance to win the tenor. No idea. All right. This is about it. This is, it. This is all I've got left. <laughs> this is all I've spent, <laughs> and then I'm done. Can he do it? No. Yeah. Okay, look. This is rather embarrassing, really. Well, and it's about to get worse, as Alex prepares to show him how it's done. Sure. 
he makes it look easy. Well done, mate. It's all down to technique. Alex whacked the cue ball into the table so that it jumped up and struck both the red ball and the coin, knocking both clean out of the circle. But this game's not over yet. Because I noticed earlier you were doing something consistently, this is what we're going to do. Yeah. Just as a little okay. reprieve. OK. What I want you to do is exactly what you did before. Put it on the spot. You've got to cover the spot with a 10 pen piece. Joel was so good at dropping the coin onto the spot, Alex is giving him a chance to win his money back by doing just that. No. Unlucky. Oh. First one to do it. Right, covering the spot. Yeah, one shot. Time for the undisputed champion to show him how it's done. Oh. That wasn't part of the plan. Has Alex completely messed up this con game? Will Joel win the first ever tenor from the Hustlers? Let's find out. OK! Right. This, this is the one. Right. Because he failed, Alex now has to give Joel another shot at winning the tenor. I think the words quit while you were ahead. Quit <laughs> ahead, maybe. Ooh, nearly out the circle. Right, OK. Close one. Can Alex save face and drop the coin onto the spot? There you go. He's done it. Joel actually never stood a chance. Every time Alex set the shot up for him, he placed the coin slightly off centre, never flat on top of the ball. That way, no matter how Joel hit it, the coin would always fly off at an angle. But when he set up his own shots, the coin was completely flat and directly above the spot. So when he hit the cue ball, it knocked the red out of the way and the coin dropped straight down. It's completely foolproof. Almost. So in the last Celebrity Con game of the series, it's Celebrity Zero, Hustlers 10. Well done. <laughs> what, a, what a trick. Yeah. <laughs> Still to come, these tourists go all loopy for Jess. How on earth have you managed to do that? And why Paul likes to be beside the seaside. Absolutely. We wouldn't be here if people weren't going to win. If you're planning a holiday this year and don't want to run into any hustlers, here's some essential advice to get you on your way. When you travel abroad, you obviously have to take a certain amount of cash with you. So here's some tips to make sure you and your money stay safe. Firstly, there are so many ATM machines around the world now that you don't really need to take that much cash with you in one big batch. If you do have to take a large amount of cash, then make sure you don't put it in one of these. These bum bags. These are just such an obvious target for any pickpocket. It just screams, this is where I've got all my money and my valuables. If you want to use something else, try using one of these. These are money belts. You can put your money in here and wear it underneath your clothes. So it becomes very difficult for a pickpocket to know where you keep your money. Lastly, a good tip would be never to keep all your money in one place. Have a little bit of cash in your wallet and have the rest of it in a money bag underneath your clothes. That way, if you do get robbed, you don't lose everything. This is the seaside town of Bournemouth, where locals and tourists flock to enjoy the sun and while away the hours on the rides and amusements. Paul and Jess have set up their own stall, offering amazing prizes from games consoles to widescreen TVs. This is the Razzle Dazzle. Paul starts touting for business. All right, guys, come and play. It's just a game. We don't buy. Get two free rolls. It's really simple. It's two pound a roll. I'll give you two to start. We win any of the prizes that you see here today. When you roll, whatever score you get, yep. we'll make points. So if okay. you roll a 41, you get a point and a half, like that. If you get 10 points, you win anything that you like. But today, it's two pound a roll. Go for right. it. It's just all in there, right? That's it. The game is simple. There's a cup with eight marbles. The player throws the marbles onto a board with lots of holes, each one randomly numbered between one and six. 
Paul adds up the total and compares it to a scorecard to find out how many prize points they've made. All the player has to do is win 10 prize points for a fantastic jackpot. So you've got 8 yep. plus 6 is 14, yep. plus 9, 23, 25, 29, 32. Now 32 doesn't win anything. I'll give you another roll. Go for it. Now you have a look over here, you'll see the points that you want to get. Okay, so that's uh, 35 plus 4. 39. 39 plus 5, 44. So 44 is 5 points. You're already halfway there. That's lucky, to be honest. That's really lucky to get so far so, so that fast. Will stay if I've got another 2 pounds. Absolutely. You yeah. keep playing, your points are good. As soon as you walk away, you lose. So here. What do you want to play for? Well, that's 5 plays. We'll give you change back if you win ahead of time. So what do you want to play for? Yes, free. You want to go for the games console? Yeah. He's playing for this a top-of-the-range games console. Go for it. Roll. A whole load of zeros, but then... 39, right? Half a point. Half a point, and you know the half a point up. I think you should keep playing. The only way you can lose is to walk away. That's another ten pounds. Yes, roll for it. You got another five. Go for it. Let's go. Come on, buddy. You can do it. And now we got nine. Twenty-two. That's twenty-nine. No points again, but that's the magic number. Oh, yeah, 29. Yeah. The 29 does not add points, right. but it does add prizes. Now, it does double, so it's £4 a roll after that, but you're playing for any two prizes you like on the stand. OK, so currently you're playing for that. Yeah. Pick any other prize you like on the stand. I'll go for the TV then. <laughs> you go for the TV, <laughs> TV and that, OK. The mark is now playing for the games console and a widescreen TV, but it now costs £4 a throw. 30, nothing for 30. Another £4 if you want to play. Come on, look at what you're playing for. You get five plays for that. I'll show you the line-up spending. 41? There it is. One and a half. So that brings you up to seven. Sweet. You've got to pay again if you want to play. Let me tell you something. It usually takes somebody a lot longer to make five points. You made five points like that. Look at what you're going to win. Really. That's true. The mark has already spent £40. But by the sound of it, he'd be mad to quit now. Actually, the only mad thing is that he's playing this game in the first place. And here's why. This is the granddaddy of all carnival games and is the most crooked game you've ever seen because your chances of actually getting 10 points are completely nil. So it works like this. You throw the, the marbles into the box and then we add up all the numbers to see what the total is. So that gives you 44. And what do you get for 44? five points and you're halfway to winning your prize. The problem is, is it didn't add up to 44. In fact, it added up to something low, something around 27. But what I do is I miscount when I want to give you points and keep you interested in the game. If I don't do that, you actually make nothing on every single roll. But the psychology gets better because the prizes increase. For example, if you hit 29, that's actually one of the most common numbers you can get with a game. When you hit 29, they add a prize. However, you also have to double your investment. So even if you start playing for two pounds, suddenly you're playing for much more. And I keep doing this until I've got all the money in your wallet. The razzle is designed to be confusing. That's why there are so many marbles and so many tiny numbers. No matter where the marbles land, the chances of making a winning total are astronomical. The total will almost always equal zero points or 29 to add another prize that they'll never win. But that doesn't stop this guy from throwing good money after bad. Do you ever get people winning? Absolutely. We wouldn't be here if people weren't going to win. Just as the mark is losing faith, along comes another magic number 29. I'll go for the week. I'll go for the week. So that's one more amazing prize that he's on the verge of not winning. And it now costs a hefty six pounds a roll. There goes more money. Five rolls. Let's see how you do. Come on, you've only got three points to get. Before he gives you another half a point. Exactly. Seven and a half. You're getting there. Let's go. All right, another 29. You've got to be the luckiest guy we've had this week. No one's ever got Another 29. Another prize and another price hike. It's now an eye-watering eight pounds a pop. He's already spent an incredible 84 pounds, 
but he's now only two and a half points from the jackpot, and Paul keeps dangling more prizes to keep him hooked. What do you want? One and a half. Nine. It takes you up to nine. Oh. There's the miscount to give the mark another one and a half points. It's another loser, and now he's finally out of cash. You're out of rules at the moment. If you walk away, you lose. I'm telling you that just as a friend. Can Paul extract any more money from a student who's already blown his student loan? There's an ATM around the corner, but I can't hold it for more than two minutes. It's worth a try. Yeah, see, that's a rip off, that. Yeah, that's terrible. Here comes the killer offer. How much has he lost? Let me see how much he's got. I'm going to put that underneath that. Come back and win, I'll give you that as well. You'll give him the money back? Yeah. If the mark reaches his 10 points, Paul won't just give him the prizes, he'll also give him all his money back. You've got to be honest, though, that, that's a lot, and I'm really just trying to do it for you, because that's, that's bad luck. Get one more point. Yeah. How can he possibly refuse? Yep. You got four rolls. Good luck, buddy. Thank you. All right. Fair All right, let's count them up together. Okay, so there's a three plus three is six. You count it for me, mate. Six plus four is ten plus four is twelve. Twelve. Fourteen. Seventeen. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Come on. Twenty-two. Keep rolling. You only got to get one more point. Well, six is 21. It all rests on this final throw. All right, be lucky. This is it. All right, pal, here we go. There's five, 10, plus seven is 17, plus eight is 25. I'm really sorry. What a surprise. It's another zero. Hey, thanks for playing. I really wish you would have won. You're one Thank point you. away. You're great anyway. If I could hold it for you, I would. All right, buddy. Take care. Have a nice day. Right, have a nice day. This simple seaside amusement has cost the mark an incredible £148 in the space of a few minutes. Bless it. Bless it. All right, next. The prize has got the better of me, and I just wanted to keep going and keep going and keep going. And the fact that I got five points in my first go, and you only have to get ten, proved to me that you could get points, and if I had a few more notes in my pocket, I would have probably spent more. Number games are brilliant because people find it incredibly difficult to walk away once they're invested. And it seems that if they just keep playing, they're bound to win. But you can never win at the razzle. And if you see it, walk, even better, run away. When on holiday, it doesn't get much better than relaxing in the sun with a drink in your hand. Except if that drink is free. The hostlers are going to show you how to win drinks from your mates by using proposition bets. The prop bet makes you believe you're onto a sure thing. But of course, the hostlers always have the edge. And you don't stand a chance. So watch and learn. I'll have a gin and tonic, please. Jess is out for a holiday drink. A drink she plans to win from her new friends using some till roll and a prit stick. A couple of cups, got a roll of paper and some glue. And I'm going to make three giant loops. So can you please be my glue boy? This one's going to be mine. I'm ready. Mm, I think that'll do. OK? What I want you to do is just glue these together for me. Is there glue there? Go on, glue boy. Go on, glue boy. There you go. OK, so that's my loop. Can you time put that over your neck? Just hold that. You can, you can be keeping them safe. I'm not going to do yours. Before. Thank you. Very good at that. <laughs> right, last one. Perfect. OK, now can I just take those back off you? OK. I think it should be between you, you and me. It's a competition. So, this is your loop. Just hold it like that. This all is the same your size loop. They're all the same size. OK? okay. Now, I'm going to show you. Do a little tear in the centre, and then tearing down like that. Whoever finishes first with two separate loops and holds them out wins. I'm going to give you a little head start because I've okay. already started. You ready? Yeah. Go. 
fun. Do it. I think faster. you're going a little bit faster. Be very, very careful. Come on. If you break it, then you lose. Yeah, okay. I think you're both beating me, actually. Yeah, okay. See ya. I've got nice. ages to go. No way. Oh, and whoever wins, at least drinks off everyone. Just drinks are fantastic. Yay! Well, how on earth have you done that? They're not separate. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> how on earth have you managed to do that? <laughs> Sorry, I'll be one more minute. I'm still, I'm still doing mine. Just do that. You've been out. You've been out. I've nearly done, boys. Hang on. Well. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, Jess may have taken the longest, but she's the only one holding two separate loops making her the default winner. Yours is one massive circle and yours is a loop, and I've got two separate ones. Those were the rules. Of course, these guys never stood a chance. When Jess made her loop, she just glued one end to the other. But when she made the loops for the guys, she secretly twisted one of the ends. There it is. If there is any twist in the loop, it's impossible to tear it in half and end up with two separate, intact loops. While the boys were ripping furiously, Jess took her time because she knew she was guaranteed to win all along. You look really confused. Very good. Thank Very you. Good. Well done. So that's the end of the Hustlers' holiday. They've stolen. She's got your camera. They've lied. Looks like you've got braking fluid coming out. And they've swindled. It's a £200 deposit just for any damages and stuff like that. Can I see your passport, please? Exposing the scams that rip off tourists around the world. <laughs> Where's my laptop? Where's my laptop? So remember what you've seen. That way you will avoid getting hustled on holiday. Yeah, I've been conned completely.